Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. Uh, hey, and me. I'm Kelsey. You remember? <laughs> hey, I, I call him K-Man, like Kramer. <laughs> yeah. I was going to be reading my comic book, and I totally forgot. It's still I've early. Got my, I've got my stack of Jalen <laughs> behind me. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, I have it handy. <laughs> oh, my God. It's chromium. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Now you're making me want to go get those. I have a bunch of the the like oh, young yeah. blood strike file and stuff like that too. Even though we're not going over that today, it's hard to not love Wildcats trilogy. I got that right over. Here. <laughs> it's so good. And then X Factor. A lot. A lot of people were uh, saying oh. that. This, a lot of people were saying that these issues were their first introduction to. I actually uh, really right? like that. Some of that stuff's inked by um, uh, Bob Wycheck. Is that how you say oh, his okay. name? Okay. And uh, I think it's why check because he inked a lot of that stuff. And I actually really liked that look. It had kind of a Mignola look. So it was like yeah. a little a little cleaner. Right, um, right. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Happy Sunday. We've got Kier, James, Predor. You kept calling him Predator last time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> James. Just dreaming. Peter and Chauncey. Chauncey came early. I saw Chauncey. I was organizing files and he he said that he brought his snorkel because i said bring your snorkel because we're going deep <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is this is old school yeah this is gonna be fun what year was this was this is um like 80 uh, uh no 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 this is like 93 ish 90 ish no i would say like 91 yeah uh, because he started i mean from the stories that he told was like he started getting hit up by, I think, like Rob Liefeld to come over and work for Extreme while he was working on Namor. And so he really put the pedal to metal and tried to um, to finish um, Namor kind of as quickly as possible to get onto this. Because he said he said that they were they were literally going to pay him like I, I kind of know what the rates were back then. I can't speak for what Jay was offered. But but, you know, I mean, it was almost like if you did two pages, you were making as much as probably you would make for a whole book. For a oh, whole yeah. Book. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've heard stories of people doing pinups for at least a grand. I mean, just right. <laughs> I, I had heard I had heard interior page rates for a couple of people that I know was like fifteen hundred a page. Yeah, that's a yeah. lot of money for 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 a comic book page oh so. yeah well i mean they were raking it in back then it was good times but see it made people it made people lazy i think <laughs> oh it did it did yeah i mean you know we can uh, there's a few that come to mind quickly that were image founders kind of i mean mm. i don't know what i mean they, they had a lot of business stuff to to take care of too though you know what i mean it wasn't it wasn't just like hey i'm drawing a book it's like i'm starting a company What's interesting is like, it, whereas it makes other people lazy, it gave Jay Lee the opportunity to do more on a page than he has ever done. Right. And and it turned out I didn't like it as much. <laughs> Which book are you talking about? Well, his uh, Hell Shock. You know, like he uh -oh. he was rolling in it at that point from all them image books. Yeah. Uh, and people digging into his back issues. He had a lot of money, so he could, and he put tons of work into that hell shock stuff it was it was, wow, it was beautiful stuff yeah. but man I, this is why i keep hounding on that deadline yeah made him take risks to to get things done faster and i think ultimately it was like yeah. more exciting you know in a way well you know that yeah. you know you know the story on hell shock too is that he got in a lot of trouble for that first issue oh no what happened well, because it was only like it was like 14 pages of interior art, and then he padded the back with a bunch of like prelim stuff. And McFarland saw it and was like, <laughs> "Dude, we could not have artists that we're bringing in pulling stuff like this." <laughs> so yeah, he got he got um, spanked on the bottom a little bit for that. Yeah, this stuff would have flown, you know, a couple years into the, into the start, but not now. Uh -uh. You got to well, make your deadlines. You got to. <laughs> well, and back then, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say that that a lot of the books that I were I was doing were 24 pages, and at the very least, 22. Mm -hmm. DC, when when I worked for DC, they cut the page rate, which which it was interesting is people didn't really pick up on this, and I I immediately did the math and was like, dude, you're literally losing a month's salary a year. But the books mm -hmm. went from 22 pages to 20 pages, so that meant in a year, if you are a monthly artist you were actually losing 24 pages of work, which is over mm -hmm. a full issue. Granted, you, you weren't on the hook to do the work, but most people, you know, that's, you work for a living. Could you imagine losing a month's salary in a year? It's uh, hard. I, 
I've lost a lot more than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's taken me a long time to kind of realize, oh, crap, you know, you're losing money when you're doing all this. <laughs> so Peter says it was 14 pages. I was trying to remember. I just guessed. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, oh, this is funny. This is what you said too, Kelsey. Jason Momoa, Aquaman, is Haley Namor. I was looking through it the other day in preparation of this, and it, like, hit me like a rock. I was like, this is this is Jason Momoa. <laughs> Holy crap! For DC, they just did Namor for instead yeah. of uh, Aquaman. <laughs> right. Well, and and like the the lead in that we're going to do to this is going to be really really fun because I I grabbed um uh three different artists that I think are were really um pivotal and Jay kind of um creating the 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 look that he kind of went with with um Namor and uh, you know most people could probably guess who they are but you were a little surprised with one of my choices. What do you mean? Um, uh, uh kevin nolan oh yeah I, I actually it's funny i see it now like in the faces and like some yeah. of the proportions of the body because back then when uh you know i'm i'm used to like kevin nolan from like a certain period which he had kind of squat figures but like when you look at like his outsiders issue or some of his batman stuff he had like really wild proportions yeah, wild proportions. Um, you can see really in the faces um, that Jay got a lot from it. The, the great thing about Kevin Nolan is he's such a good cartoonist that he boils his stuff down to very, very definite um, ciphers that he uses, the way that he draws mouse, the way that he draws rendering on the cheeks. And I think it's easier for a young artist to emulate, whereas someone like Bill Sienkiewicz, it's a lot of information to yeah. take in because he's dry brushing and he's doing all these crazy things. But I mean, I definitely, I, I would say that that Jay probably was a fan of the Moon Knight work that Sienkiewicz did, which mm. actually did lead into Kevin Nolan, followed oh, him yeah. on that. And then, and then clearly, clearly Simon Bisley yeah. uh, is, is in the, is last. Uh, oh yeah. Movie. The Vasic. Yeah. Is, is the, the Lobo stuff that he was doing in like the, the 90s. I would uh, say I would I would be curious if he's even influenced by some of that ABC Warrior stuff and and you know maybe not Slain because that was painted but like the ABC Lord Warrior Slain was ninety three or at least that's oh. what it was credited when I saw it online I didn't realize it was that much later yeah but, I didn't uh, realize that no wow. but that's what I saw was Slain was ninety three which actually shocked me because I would have assumed that it was like if, if I would have guessed I would have said somewhere between eighty nine and ninety one but All I. Right. But I wasn't. I wasn't even collecting comics when Jade was doing Namor. I wasn't even buying comics yet. So mm. you know, I mean, I'm well, not sure if I was. I wasn't. I wasn't probably drawing or even reading comics at that point. Yeah, ninety one was like the image when Image uh, started, right? Wasn't that ninety ninety one? Uh, image. Yeah. Yeah, like I think Malibu started bubbling up with like some teasers yeah. and stuff, uh, probably in like ninety one. I think my interest started bubbling up around 88 89 uh, you know the batman movie was happening it was definitely in the air my math yeah. teacher had a briefcase full of spider-man comics you know somebody showed me like mcfarland's uh spider-man cover with all the webs but yeah. he was showing it to me because it was it had the glow in the dark webs it was one of those alternate covers and i was like whoa cool i didn't even give a crap about like mcfarland or spider-man i was more interested in the glow in the dark i was like neat <laughs> I always I always laugh because one of my favorite favorite comics uh, early that I bought was Wildcats issue number two had the hollow foil cover with like the little loops they were like <laughs> little loops that like connected and I would just when I would I had I had um uh like a like a box that you would buy like maybe beer in or something or like just that the grocery store would give you to take your groceries in and so I had that in my room and I that was all the comics I had was you know uh, not even a short box really. And I would flip through, and I remember when, whenever I would see that comic cover, it just made me happy. <laughs> yeah, totally. I, yeah, I know. I think I know what you're talking about. Hey, actually, Jasper Plan Nine says he met Jay Lee I know, Friday. I, I, yeah, yeah. I put I put that up already, but yeah. I think I saw that photo on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if that was you, yeah, I saw one. Actually, Jay was. I was. I was kind of surprised. I was like, "Which one's Jay?" And then I was like, "Cause Jay looks like a kid." I'm like. You're kidding me. He looks like young and fit. And I'm like, you should. 
Why Lanil, don't you look like a broken down old man like the rest Lanil, of us? You, Lanil, you is like that too. He's like Benjamin Buttons. I swear to God, like <laughs> when, Lanil, when I first I met Lanil at like Comic Con probably like 15 years ago, he looked older then than he does now. Like I see him now, I'm like, oh, dude, are you like reverse aging? What is going on? <laughs> that's not that's not fair. <laughs> I know, I know. It, it is really funny. So and 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 um, I remember the first year that I went to Comic Con and Scott Doombeer was selling original art. Um, my, uh, my wife was, uh, helping him. So she was kind of helping man the booth when people would come up and ask to see like Bruce, Tim art or whatever. And people kept asking her like, do you have, does he have any Jay Lee? Does he have any Jay Lee? And she totally <laughs> thought all weekend that they meant Jim Lee <laughs> and oh, were no. appreciating it. <laughs> it was so oh no, <laughs> Jay. I'm looking for Lee, Jay Lee. <laughs> yeah, Jay Lee. She just figured that they were like shortening his name or whatever. <laughs> That's funny. Well, amazingly, most people don't know that Jim and Jay Lee are both related to Stanley. No. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, I used to think. I, I used oh, to think, uh, yeah, Stan Lee was an Asian guy and Jim right. Lee was like a white guy. I used to picture oh. that, like, I swear, I, I pictured Jim Lee looking a lot like how Chris Claremont ended up looking. Oh, you know? Yeah. 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 I had no idea. And then what's funny, you know, uh, now it's Jim, you know, it's the little guy with the hat, you know, he's yeah. just the yeah. little powerhouse of a guy, you know, <laughs> he has so much energy working around. Right. Him, I mean, it's like, he's like a nuclear reactor and he actually will charge. He kind of charges everyone around him. Yeah. He was so funny. He would come in and he would want to like, he would get something in his head and he'd be like, he'd be like, let's let's all do a drawing today we'll sell them and then we'll go to vegas like on saturday <laughs> <laughs> and, and and like he would make it happen it was crazy it was it would make oh, me man. nervous when he would have those ideas <laughs> yeah no you're like i got 10 pages to finish jim <laughs> i know he's like he's like we're all gonna do the 10 pages for you and then we'll we'll do these sketches by three uh, <laughs> yeah like, it would happen at lunch sometimes too. We would, we would go to lunch and like something would just like evolve over like 45 minutes of lunch. And then you'd go back to the studio and be like, Oh God. Suddenly it's on the schedule. No, it's a, it's a new book. It's been advertised already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we've got a lot of art to look at. We might as well just start getting to it. So um, yeah. I'll let the chat pick really quick since it doesn't, these won't have to go in any particular order. Do you guys want to look at a little bit of the Kevin Nolan art that I believe influenced Jay early on? Do you oh, want to yeah. look at the Sienkiewicz art or do you want to look at the Bisley? We're not going to look at a lot, but we're just going to get the flavor of some of the isms. So if you want to vote really quick, um, just I'll, I'll, I'll let it go for a second. We'll see Bisley, Nolan or Sienkiewicz first. Well, I'm always down for Bisley, of course, uh, Sienkiewicz, uh, but you Kevin Nolan. Hmm? We always, I, I was, I always tell people it's, it's fine. You can plug, you can plug your stuff here. We don't, I don't ever, um, I don't mind. So yeah, business, can you? Uh, he, it said uh, not to plug my YouTube channel, but I have a few videos up of Jay Lee drawing from the Phoenix cons. I I've watched those videos before then actually. So yeah, we... order, I'm going to, if it's chronological, then I'm pretty sure we're going to go Sinkevich first. Oh, okay. Nolan. Okay, they want to see Nolan. Uh, we're getting more votes for Nolan. Uh, that's we'll, two we'll Nolan, one five Beasley. More, five more votes. All the one, one vote for all of it, of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll start opening the Nolan. I think we're, we'll we'll do Nolan first. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, what Nolan is this? Uh, it must have been pretty old. Is this like the what is it? The Farmer's Outside, Daughter or what? Outsiders. Outsiders annual. Oh, Outsiders. Do you ever see that one he did with the elves and stuff? It was in black and white. Uh, is that um, Dalgoda or, or El Grimwood's daughter? Grimwood's daughter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have those. Yeah, I have those. Yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Yeah, it's real spindly and All right. every, everybody's so like thin. <laughs> oh, my God. This is so freaking good. I, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, too. I was having a little bit of an anxiety attack when we started the video. It's very hot at my house. And I've oh. been super stressed out the last like two weeks because, like I said, I haven't been drawing, and oh. it's like, oh, 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 we started looking at art, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's right, good. I'm gonna, that's I'm great. Share my screen. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm a very sensitive person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too sensitive for this world. Let's put uh, it that. Way. My <laughs> bank account's too sensitive for me not to be drawing. So <laughs> yeah, I know mine too. Okay, so you can see my screen. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is a painted cover. You're not going to see a lot of Jay Lee in this, but in fact, you kind of can a little bit. Let me. Um, I so, love his paintings. 
yeah, he's great. So you can see the that face bit. is straight up, Jay Lee. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for <laughs> sure. Oh, there's some stuff in here that you're gonna go. Oh my god, it's crazy. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you can really see the J here. That's you can so actually great. see it in her face. Yeah. And even this Batman has got just the tiniest bit of a Jay Lee vibe. But when we get into the pen and ink stuff, you're gonna see it even more. So, you know what's fun is nobody's doing this right now. Not even Kevin Nolan. Somebody could totally ape this style and make a thousand thousand bucks. I'm gonna say a thousand. I was about to say a million bucks, but I forgot where we were. Could they make fifteen hundred dollars a page, Kelsey? <laughs> <laughs> you could uh, you could sure. Oh wait, don't peek at this page first. Hold on. Back right, in nineteen ninety four dollars. So, <laughs> so you can oh, yeah. see a little bit in some of this stuff, the pointy eyebrows some of this more angular rendering that he's doing on the faces there's a little bit of the scritchiness that you're going to see um that will, will be more apparent in bill sinkevich nolan doesn't tend to splatter yeah that cover what a predator seven was like wondering what the style was the painted yeah the painted cover but it still had his kind of like his the way yeah. he renders people you know but this and this you can see more clearly the you know the the connection yeah a, a lot of this the a lot of the rendering and stuff that jay will do on the faces you're going to start to see this mouth thing kevin nolan has a very very creepy way that he draws mouth <laughs> deep sort of um shadows and best eyebrows in the business come on yeah, look at those yeah. <laughs> so oh here's the spread let me show you the spread yeah it's cool to, you start to see it a little bit more there's an angularness and and almost like a little bit of a stiffness with some of Kevin's stuff. Yeah, and then Jay dials it up to eleven. Yeah, <laughs> I love I love his sense of color too. He uses gray a lot, which nobody does. Yeah, yeah, and like those like the very like muted purples and pinks. Yeah, which I know you're a big fan of. I can't figure that out. I've been trying to use the old palette. Like, I, you, if you look online, you can go, you know, uh, 80s Marvel palette, uh, right. whatever, Comico palette. You can find all that stuff online, but using it in the way, in the effective way that they used to use it back in the day, it still, it still blows me away. Like, I'm like, how are they getting this? You know, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Check this out. That's beautiful. There's like three... There's like a gray, a blue gray, and then a, a more rich blue. Yeah. But there's so much separation and everything. You're going to see a lot of shots like this from J2, where where he oh, does yeah. the three point three point perspective and a pretty extreme angle. It's it's kind of one of the I would consider more traditional muscles that he flexes because his stuff is so out there and and like you mentioned multiple times the deadline element of it yeah he didn't he didn't have a lot of time to draw backgrounds but a lot of times when he does you're gonna see him pull angles that are very extreme down shots that look like this and up shots that look like this I but wonder I mean if he really struggle with the deadline probably by the end of his issue but i don't think he was ever a monthly guy in the sense that you, you could see he has very definitive works like he did this one issue this one yeah. issue this uh... <laughs> well, when we get into it too there's some things that i'm going to bring up that i'll save for when we're looking at his pages but i honestly don't know how he got away with some of the stuff that he did to be honest i i've worked with editors for 25 years I mean, he was able to get away with what I would call murder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Seneca uh, fifty fifty says to be honest, Nolan's pretty plain. That's an interesting thing. That's an interesting uh, take, which I've never heard before in regards to Kevin Nolan. Yeah, he's like um, I compared to Jay Lee, like compared to who we're talking about today, put, which we should get to sooner than later. What? Yeah, if you put splatter on this stuff, you would definitely see um, the Jay Lee. But here, let me just show you this because that's this just the of, old school. This yeah, is it's right out of a Jay Lee drawing. It's like the guy, the bridge between, you know, Bob Layton and like, you know, uh, who am I thinking of? Did Profit? You know, Stephen Splat? You know, yeah, Steve, uh, yeah. <laughs> like so, there's this evolution to that. You know, <laughs> this face here, I mean, is trademark Jay. Honestly, if you posted mm. this online and had people guess who it was, I I bet ninety percent of the people, especially if they've never seen this, would all guess Jay Lee. Everyone would guess Jay Lee. Mm -hmm. It looks right out of like Inhumans. 
Yeah, just take the storytelling out of the equation, and suddenly yeah. you're in jail. <laughs> no, yeah. Okay. So now we're going to get into. Um, uh, we'll look at uh, just a little bit of the Bill Sienkiewicz. Yeah. What do you got for his stuff? Uh, uh, two Moon Knight issues. The Moon Knight. Oh yeah, because this stuff is like. I'm uh, not that familiar with this stuff. I came in to Sienkiewicz, but with um, w- with uh, New Mutants. Uh, so I, I wasn't, everybody was like moon night, moon night, moon night, but I had never really seen a whole lot of it, just some covers. And I'm like, well, it kind of looks like, like rough Neil Adams, you know? Yeah. So but I, maybe I haven't seen this stuff. No, I have not seen this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah. Wow. So you're, you're getting the splatter. Now, Sienkiewicz is another one who initially wasn't inking himself on this book. And and in the same way that we're going to see with Jay Lee, his work literally just becomes something so much greater. The moment he begins inking himself, you just get this incredible um, work that's just so. Uh, I wonder how much of that is the deadline, and how much is just them getting bored and really wanting to do something different, or it's a little bit of both. Like, what can I? I'm really bored of this. What can I do? I, I think in this it, amount of time, you know, it's very, it's very difficult to if you if you're someone who wants a more energetic style, this almost has a little bit of a McFarland thing. Yeah, um, no kidding. Wow. Um, I, it's difficult to draw tight enough to give it to a pencil yeah. I don't, or an inker. Like it becomes annoying, like almost a distraction to um, have to draw that um, controlled. While uh, F- uh, Frankie Noso uh, one says a Marvel editor told a young Jay Lee to draw samples from a script, Lee did five pages overnight, and the editor hired him. And then they've been chasing him down for his pages ever since. <laughs> right, right. Look at this. <laughs> wow, that's so good. Yeah, okay. yeah. It was Sink- Sinkevich is not to be underestimated. You know, like I, I wish he kind of had, you know, a little bit of this. I, he could probably turn it on and off. You know. Yeah, let me. I'm gonna grab some from the other issue. But I love seeing his style colored flat, and that's why I really like these Namor issues uh, because I like Jay Lee's stuff colored flat as well. It really lets the art sing. Here's some more. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that that looks like closer to uh, Hellshock. Yeah, well, and Jay, in the back of um, Namor, there were pages where he did uh, inset panels just like this uh, for like um, almost like a source book type thing that they were doing, a little bit of an extra, um, you know, sort of bump. Let's show you this one page in particular. I'll zoom in when I get to the page I'm looking for this. A Predator 7 said, he's talking to Jasper, said David Finch talked about uh, an issue Nolan did about the origin of man bat that was also a very good issue but like he he did uh, a batman black and white that was really cool very different kind of look um, so check, check this out kelsey a new new mutants i think yeah i have the man bat right here the man bat oh, is that's is so weird. cool God. yeah, nice. yeah you could you could see the influence on jay yeah uh, i mean I think- a, a lot of times we've talked about this. A, a favorite artist of ours may just touch on a style where you go, man, like he did this Venom pinup. And like, that's like my favorite thing that that guy's ever done. Right. It's not terrible when you put it that way, but it's like, but they move right past that style and they don't stick with it. They evolve and they become better, but maybe not necessarily like working in your favorite thing. But I think, you know, for someone like Jay, he probably saw this and just kept going like, man, if I did a yeah. comic that looked like this... Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm trying to narrow my scope. I mean, I, I had so many, because just coming into comics and discovering everything, you're just like, oh, you're absorbing everything from all over the world. Just give me, give me, give me. And okay. and now it's like, holy crap, I got like schizophrenia as an artist. You know, I need, <laughs> I got all these voices in my head. I right. need to like narrow the focus down. So now this is Bisley from 1990. Mm. But I mean, you could definitely see. I mean, uh, Jay uses he almost swipes. Oh yeah, in Namor, there's there's a a, a page with um Namor that's almost identical. To this except you can see his face. But, it's like um, he he doesn't go cartoony though, where Beasley goes cartoony a lot in his background figures and things like that. 
Jay gets pretty good at doing this kind of anatomy, though, that the very coiled, um, more more edges, um, yeah. like in, in particular on like the abs. And uh, again, you know, I, I mean, I've worked around artists that work both ways. Some some will draw with comic books on their desk and some won't. I kind yeah. of get the impression that Jay probably does or uh -huh. did. Um, so things like this, he probably had the stuff out. You, and we'll we'll see when I I'll point out the piece because we'll we'll see it when we look at the Jay stuff. So, well, I mean, I, I have not been above uh, referencing anatomy for especially arms uh, from Beasley because he does some of the best arms in the business. Yeah. I mean, they're perfect. Next to Frazetta, he's one yeah. of the best. <laughs> Beasley's so wild. I mean, it's just such crazy shit. I wish I could let go like like this, man. I, I even like I've started to look at his later work, which a lot of people uh just you know, poof, you know, it's not it's not judgment on Gotham and they just ignore. Uh, but it's brilliant, it's really good. He never slacks off, you know. He, he, if there's a bar, he draws yeah. the bar with like even though it's like little scribblies, he's drawing all the bottles and everything, and he's very thorough for someone you wouldn't think would be that thorough okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into jay lee being inked by other people we're going to look oh, at a wow. little bit of that work well i think it's important because we want to see what the, the 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 base drawings kind of look like without yeah. all as because it'll definitely help people sort of wrap their brain around um the actual what what jay puts into a piece We'll go through some of these fast. I'm just going to open the whole issue. There's some nice stuff, though. I mean, I actually appreciate some of the things that he's doing in this work. So, so this is a cover. Your car alarm's going off. <laughs> yeah, I know. I could hear it out there. It's, not, it's definitely not my car. My car's in the shop. I've got. I'm going to get hit with a two thousand dollar bill. Ooh, uh, it Ooh. sucks. So this is Jay inking himself. And again, this is incredible. So Jay did, as far as I know, there's an X-Men annual with a beast story that he did that I believe mm. um, precedes this work. But do you know how rare it is to be a brand new penciler and actually get a pencil and ink a cover? So, I mean, well, when did, when did the, the X factor stuff come out? Uh, X factor, I believe is after this, after this. Okay. Cause uh, yeah. <laughs> he did like three issues of spider-man remember we were we had talked about those um, okay so he went from not inking for inking himself to not inking himself to inking himself to not inking himself to right, inking himself was, <laughs> probably the editors were concerned about him actually being able to like keep a deadline pencil yeah. and inking himself um you know and then maybe well, he was able also i think why check had must have had a contract with x factor because if you look he inked um uh Larry Stroman, right? Um uh uh Cusada, um Jay, you know, uh I think he inked everybody on that book, so he must have had it locked out. And, well, you know, and the thing is, is I was gonna say, like, definitely I do believe that there's a little bit of Larry Stroman in Jay's work, and Cassada's mm -hmm. not a bad call either, in terms of like I could I could see him liking those those guys' work um at, at mm -hmm. this time as well. Joe Casada was really, really freaking good. I mean, he still is, but I'm saying like he was good back then. And then, um, you know, um, uh, well, X Factor was such a good book because like their editor uh, must have been good, or or it was Peter David. One of them uh, had really wild taste in artists, and so you get to see a lot of really interesting people tried out on that book. I think oh, that's is, wonderful. Look at that. Uh, it's a, it's, I know. I agree. I think it's a very nice page. And this this almost has a little bit of the Farford and the Gray Mauser. Um, yeah. Logo. Yeah, it does. Um, but but <laughs> this is a really pretty page. Oh, the colors I've, are too. I've never considered the Man Mignola connection there, but yeah. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it reminds me of um, the Doctor Strange um, Marvel. What do they call those books? The, the fancy books that they would do. Um, Marvel. Uh, I have it over there. It's like masterworks or no, it's um, they did a run of like a hundred books that are like big oversized hard covers oh. that are like um, almost like a graphic novel. Mark Silvestri did one. Um, oh yeah. Just the Marvel graphic novels. That's what, right, but like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that one is Busima did a few great ones. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think Mark Badger inked them on it, but it has this sort of vibe. It's a, this yeah, is really that beautiful. was, um, that was a Dr. Doom, uh, Mr. Yeah, Strange. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Or is it Mr. Strange? Doctor Strange. Yeah, Doctor Mr. Strange. Doom. 
Doctor uh, Doom, Doctor Doom, Doctor Strange. They're both doctors. <laughs> this is the spread. Oh, I, okay. Oh, so this is a spread. Let me um. Oh wow! Grab, grab this. Good yeah. figure. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. oh uh, wow! What a wacky so, machine. Yeah, but but again, I mean, this is actually quite nice. You're gonna see him. I, the sort of the joke is, it's like you kind of have your whole life to draw the first issue. And you start to really see the impact that the deadlines start to have on people mm. towards the end of the first issue, the second issue, the third. And you will actually see the quality in his work kind of drop for a little bit. But but this first issue, he comes on strong. Yeah, that's I, I don't I keep wanting to think it's McFarlane that said it, but it could have been someone else. But they uh, I heard back in the day, you know, them say the deadline is what defines your style, really, because right. you know, you kind of gets rid of all your the things that you'd like to do and it narrows it down to what you can do in that time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So, you know, this is, this all looks like Jay Lee to me. If he would have inked it himself, I actually think that these pages would have been, you know, pretty in line with what we expect. It's, you know, like he's not completely. Um, That's so funny. That right there looks like John Romita Jr.'s uh, Iron Wars 2 from Iron Man. See, uh, now, Romina Jr. is another one that I could actually see as an influence on him. Romina Jr., back in the day, like, would, would he have been on Daredevil at this point? Yeah, probably. Or um, which also had this this kind of style. And that's yeah. probably Dare, it's probably Daredevil, because him Daredevil. and Anna Sinti did, like, a long run on that. We'll just go out of order. It doesn't really matter. If this is nice, I mean, this is really, like, and, and you have to understand, Jay Lee at this point <laughs> is maybe 18, 19 years old, so he's very young. Uh, Frank uh, Frank Ray Nosa one says uh, John Romita Jr. calls his style deadline style. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, <laughs> look at these hands; they're cool. I, I think it looks really good. He always had a great sense of design. I mean, yeah. this shot—it's—it's it's a design, but it's also storytelling and it's panel layout, kind of all rolled into one. <laughs> yeah, and look at this. I mean, this is like so Jay. I love that he does this shot. Um, I think in Namor in the later issues, where it's just this silhouette and uh, the foreground, it has a couple of those candles, and then you see like Namor and some woman in bed, and like there's this skylight above them, and it's just a silhouette, yeah, with some candles, but it's wow, so perfect. So you can see you can see the the um, Kevin Olin influence here, mm -hmm. and again, very very nice hand here. This hand I think is really cool looking. You think he, he he had to have been influenced by Jim Lee as well, right? Yeah, and the, the image crew. Yeah. Sure, sure, for sure. Nice fist, you know. This is all cool stuff. We're gonna hustle a little bit because we don't want to stick. Yeah, too yeah. Long on this early stuff, but I just wanted people to get a sense of where he started. We'll look at one more of these issues. Um, if I see anything exceptional, I'll stop on it. It's just an yeah, I was noticing this last night, and I I didn't know if you were gonna do this or not, but I actually like this. This is cool. This is kind of Strowman esque. Yeah, it's like Strowman slash Batman Adventures meets yeah. Jim Jay Lee, you know, like, and, a little Kevin, and a little Kevin Nolan too. That simplicity that Nolan. Kevin puts Nolan. In. Um, there's a couple other guys. Um, this, was right, this is this this shot right here is right out of any Kevin Nolan comic. I mean, you remember Steve Lytle? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he had a kind of designy stuff occasionally too. Um, I'd this see my pretty. I Some like more Mignola esque stuff. Isn't this nice? I yeah. I love breathing room like this. And you know, and and we we talked a little bit in the last two videos about um one of the the hard parts about crowdfunded books is either squeezing in too much story into a forty eight page book or 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 not having enough room to really tell a complete story. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have a lot of opportunities in a book like that to just have a page like this where it's just her walking for two panels. You know. Yeah, I mean, if you can, you know, you're definitely going to have to accomplish things in the in the story, in the you know the dialogue or what have you. Um, but yeah, I mean, this sometimes you just want some like cool style, you know. Just to, I mean, look at this. Th these are like comics where you know, if you like me as a kid, I wasn't really, I didn't start off reading this stuff. I was interested in the art. Yeah. And like, so I can look at it and be like totally blown away and just loving each piece as a, as a piece of art, you know? And then you realize, oh crap, these are telling a story. You know, <laughs> This is right out of Ozymandias. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is. You're right. 
dude that's how fascinating is that that like he the, like literally his first Namor issue he's already hit on so many of his like most iconic ideas not yeah. not 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 like uh that he didn't have more but but uh man that is really really amazing that i love that though because this is what makes jay lee's stuff instantly recognizable even to this day you can yeah. even though his style is so different than this now there's still these hallmarks that he has and like i don't know i probably do and i just don't recognize it have these things but that i, I love that that like you can look at his work and be like, oh, that's Jay, you know? <laughs> He's drawn really good in these. I'm oh. actually super impressed. I hadn't, I, it's funny. Cause when I, when I do look at his stuff, I do always kind of throw these issues in the mix, uh, but I go through them a lot quicker, but it's actually kind of fun to sort of soak them in with everyone today. Uh, the Vasic says that's some Will, uh, Will Spartacio panel layouts as well. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Okay, so we're going to do one more. <laughs> Alame says, Kelsey, please force Richard to pronounce Namor correctly. <laughs> oh, is it, is it? Oh, it's not Namor? <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> okay, Namor. Nah, yeah, well, I don't know what part of the country you're from uh, over east. <laughs> Who, me? Oh, I'm I'm west coast all the way. Oh, that's Although, right, yeah. My, Maybe that's my, how they say it over there. My yeah. grandfather who raised me was from Brooklyn though. So I have a, a bit of a Brooklyn accent. Funny. Oh, enough. maybe that's um, holdover. Yeah. Um, so this is an interesting issue um, because of uh, this fantastic cover always tricks me because I think when I see the cover, I go, Oh, this is one of the ones that Jay inked over himself, but it actually isn't inside. But I, this cover always, when I see it, I just go, Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to flip through this one. Pretty and, wild uh, experiment in color as well. Yeah, I'm not sure who colored it. The, the whole thing is really interesting. I mean, yeah, it's it would definitely stand out. It's it's this interesting mix of um, Bisley and Kevin Nolan. <laughs> if that's, that's not fun. him, that's a great amalgam. You know, it looks like his stuff. His so inking. Again, this is, well, here, let me. I'll I'll show you who inked it, just so that we know. It's um, uh, is it Wycheck? Jeff Albrecht. I don't know that I'm familiar with that guy. Or all, yeah, Albrecht. So it's Namor. Is that what I'm supposed to be saying? Namor. Namor yeah. <laughs> like Claymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I actually like this page. I think this. I think this spread is actually cool. I like. I like this. This um, city here burning and stuff like that, or whatever it is, is very very cool. I love the knockout of the of the low sun. I wonder if he drew I that. Too. You know, and they inked it on a separate piece you know for that or if that's just the colorist going this would look cool here you yeah, know it is really really nice his his water is so bold but man it looks kick-ass everything looks dangerous in a jay lee piece uh <laughs> that cliff looks dangerous the sun looks dangerous right. all the water looks like it'll cut you yeah <laughs> that's good look at this he's in yeah even the bubbles will look like they'll hurt you that's barbed wire bubbles i mean it's <laughs> yeah right you'll get cut on his coat it, I mean... <laughs> it is i'm pretty sure this is still john byrne writing it too which is so funny to me oh they wow like such a odd couple yeah but but byrne was like complaining this whole time <laughs> i really like this oh well, well when we get into the ones where he starts thinking himself i mean it just like there's literally pages and pages of just silhouettes where you're like how did no one tell him that he needs to draw more shit? I just like don't even understand. I That's really my like favorite it. stuff. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why we've talked about that a lot. It's like the it's the weirdest thing is like his laziest pages are like some of my favorites. I've tried to get away with that stuff and like been called out by editorial. I think they've learned <laughs> since Jay was in, but I think you also have to be the type I mean, that just is. does it and doesn't give them a choice. <laughs> no, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, even this this kind of stuff where it's it's I mean you can just imagine the script. It's like she's she's toiling in pain and agony and all this stuff. And it's like he's like, All right, I'm not gonna show this guy's face. I'm not gonna even draw her here. This is gonna be fish. But the fish. added effect is drama. I look yeah. at how awesome that is. <laughs> and then just all this. It's like he didn't even I there's not even one barely silhouette that looks actually like a fish there's a couple of them here but they don't even they don't even look like what they're supposed to be that's the anchor's fault <laughs> oh you know it is actually though i would have i would have actually made them look a little more like fish yeah you know honestly um 
that because that's an easy like fix while you're uh, working on it. I always I thought this raining with the black pupils. Uh, I hope my power doesn't go out. It's raining. I love the black pupils. I think that's yeah. it's striking. And the colorist, I got to call out again. I, it's, I know this is not about the coloring, but I've never seen colorists like this. You know, I he must have been inspired by Jay's work, right? Because it's way darker than normal. Um, I don't know. It's just it, it's striking. Yeah, I like it. Look at this. Another and the paint. greens oh, and purples. This is awesome, though. Look at what do you mean? Like, yeah, he's cutting corners, but it's like the greatest stuff. No, that's not, no, I, I know, I know. Crystal I love, Planet I love issue it. three is just going to be silhouettes. <laughs> I would, I would uh, print out any of these panels and like hang it on my wall. You know, yeah, like that. That would be a cool enough. poster. Look at this. This shot right here is great. Yeah, I wonder if you can get away with this. Like the see the. I'm sure the fans too were were cursing them out, you know, in the in the letters column. Uh, I wonder how many people were really into this because I, I didn't. He didn't really explode on the scene for me until uh, uh, the Young Blood thing, and then oh. uh, followed immediately by the Wildcats thing. And I was just like, "What the hell?" <laughs> right. The, the letters that they published are generally quite glowing. Oh, okay. Um, for his work, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's everything that they got. Oh man, I used to read letters where people were just actively like hating on everything they're reading, and like the editor's just like, "Oh, hopefully we'll do better next time," you know. And like, <laughs> yeah. oh, this is nice. This is great figure work. Yeah, yeah, I like it. This Stylish. Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, man, that you have a car driving off this direction. Yeah, typically you want to go the other way, but I, I'm I'm quickly losing a lot of those rules in my right. head, and I'm like, as long as it, as long as it's very clear what's happening, you know, I don't necessarily buy the fact that the car is going toward the edge of the page that makes right. people want to flip the page. You know, right. I think they're going to want to flip the page based on like how you end that page's right. story. You know, <laughs> like, oh crap, I gotta find out what's happening. Look at this little area right here. Yeah, I love it. So Firefighters. Cool. Hey, you know, you know instantly what's happening. It's so stylish. Look at the shapes of these guys. They're like little bells. Uh, those moray patterns are driving me nuts. Uh, fire the color separator, Jasper Plant. <laughs> I'm not seeing any moray. Maybe it's coming through on the screen. Yeah, I don't. I'm not noticing it on my end. This is nice. Oh yeah, I see a little bit of it. That's also YouTube compression kind of blows on live streams. Well, that's pretty dynamic. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get into him inking himself now. We've gotten the flavor. Yeah. Of that. Oh, this is a nice page. I love the color. It's so great. It's a little dark, but man, this for his to work. This is very Larry Stroman. And a yeah, little, it is. <laughs> a little Wells, but that's beautiful, beautiful drawing. He actually, he drew very, very pretty girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very uh, model-esque. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Don't say it. <laughs> I'm just, it, it entered my brain yeah <laughs> that is killer this is this is definitely post beasley right yeah. like he's like oh, i need to amp it up a notch <laughs> is this him making himself now no, no no not yet we're just finishing this is jeff albrecht this is a very classic jay lee finger right there with that hard edge and then this What's amazing is that it's so scary looking, but still feminine. And like yeah. when I've when I've tried to draw really like grippy fingers and on a woman, like it tends to look like monster hands. Right. And I've been called out for it. I'm like, I'm trying to do this thing, you know, that he's doing here. <laughs> yeah. Let me. Uh, I actually, it was funny. I made myself a whole black and white um, version of the book. Oh, uh, nice. Do you still not, have those? Do you have the scans? I, I do. <laughs> it, it's um. I did it automated, so it was a little a little clunky on some pages, but um, I could do it manually. But uh, yeah, they're pretty interesting. There's some stuff that won't remove because of the way that it's gray, but you can kind of get an idea of what it would look like. I have some original art from the um, book that we can show, though, in black yeah. and white, so we can actually see some of the pages. In fact, we'll peek at that as soon as we finish this book, and then we'll get into the ones where okay. he's thinking stuff. But this is, this is very classic J right here, man. We're I so this is issue twenty nine. I believe we're only three issues into his run at this point. Blue Roman says the eyebrows remind me of older manga like Devil Man. It kind of does, and 
did he grow up in the states? Like I, I mean, um, uh, he grew. I want to say he grew up in um, shit. Chicago? I, I, it's been a while since I've heard him say it. I used to know where hmm. he was. Or, no, I'm, I might be thinking of Jim. I think Jim Jim grew up in St. Louis. Yeah. And for some reason, I'm thinking that, that Jay might have been from the same. Well, place. I just say that because I know a lot of Asian Americans had, had access to stuff that we didn't, like uh, 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 Bruce, uh, Bruce, <laughs> Ben Dunn. Uh, he had access to a lot of old school, like anime and manga and stuff like that. Um, I don't, I, I guess his dad traveled maybe, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, I just want, cause he could have early, early influences that we didn't Now, All of these might not be from Namor, but they're, they're similar style of what he was doing. So we can get a little bit of a look more at the original art that side of things. Nuts. What so is that is a, from? This is a crow piece, I believe. Um, this is from heritage. So you can, you can see here, um, very brushy strokes in terms of like how he's actually putting down his things. A lot of 102 though, there's still there's croquil inside of this these lines. He's got black and white splatter, which works for a very hyperbolic style like this. And even I don't know if these dotted ones. This looks like a razor blade right here. Oh wow! Yeah. Not all of them are, but there's there's definitely some razor blade going on in this piece. Hey, uh, Frank Ray No So Once has had to come back. What do you think of the current thing of young artists being called out online for using other comics for reference? That's been uh, going on forever. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, uh, who's that guy, the journal, comics journalist guy, Rich uh, Johnson. Johnson? He used to have a, a thing called Swipe File. Yeah, or Swipe where, or whatever. Yeah, and so it was all, it's that, well, I mean, that was like in the 2000s, but like, yeah, before that, we used to just kind of privately even make fun of different things like, oh, they're using so and so. But honestly, we all do. You know, we <laughs> so comics it's not really is, that big a deal. <laughs> comics is so incredibly demanding, and you're really called upon to draw just about anything under the sun. And look, some days, even if you could draw it on your best day, you just might not have the idea. And so you might, you know, be tempted. What ends up happening is like like you'll be asked to draw something and you'll either figure it out on your own or you'll go oh, man you know i kind of remember like in walking dead there was an issue where something kind of similar happened and then you might look at the comic and it might be completely different than what you remembered but that yeah. even can help you know to be honest well i mean there's guys like that have made whole careers out of doing their version of jack kirby you know or uh, alex toth i mean this is an old old thing and i think to me, that's just part of comics. When I got in, I should I need to drag out my old sketchbooks uh, back in the day because I I straight up do uh, the uh, uh, rip off the Beasley um, Terminator covers, you know, and try to draw it in his ink style instead of his paint style, you know, and well, yeah, and, I and, wow, this is great, <laughs> just this, silhouettes. This is from Namor thirty seven. This is what I told my patron patrons recently in a in a video for them. I said, your goal as an artist is not to impress other artists, okay? It's it's very easy to get into that mindset where you're trying to flex and show off for your peers. Mm -hmm. But your peers aren't the ones that are going to put bread in your pocket. Your fans are. And f yeah. fans, most fans aren't really going to give a shit if you draw like another artist. I mean, it's like, I'm not telling you to throw integrity out the window by any means. But it's like, it, I mean, I see stuff online and and... They're so far off the mark. They'll go, oh, my God, this reminds me of such and such. And I'm like, really? That's what you're seeing? It's like, doesn't remind me of that. But it, it's all the eye of the beholder. Well, the way I look at it, too, is like, okay, I can't get my fix of, you know, that um, Travis Charest style. Well, who who's doing that more on the regular? Well, you got Olivier Coipel. has got elements of it. Right. So I look at it like that. I, I don't get my fix of Adam Hughes. Well, who's doing that more on the regular? Well, Terry Dotson's got a lot of Adam Hughes-ish yeah. stuff going on in his work. So, like, I kind of look at it like that. Like, oh, you know, I can get a little best of both worlds because, like, you know, Terry's gone his own direction. I think he's an excellent storyteller and, and visual stylist, even though he draws a lot of inspiration from Adam's stuff. I find a lot of stuff to love about what Terry does. And I brought up uh, Ryan Souk a few videos ago. Yeah. Ryan went through Kevin Mignola Nolan, Mignola. 
yeah so i mean it's like and he does a great adam hughes you know yeah and alame brings up he says let's remember that barry windsor smith started as a as a kirby clone that's so true yeah. <laughs> so this is from obviously extreme studios this is uh i guess like the young blood i don't know if they're considered yeah, the build, so right good. but anyway this isn't namor but this is you know maybe a year a year or so after he worked on namor but but it's nice because we can see the original art what's neat really? too is that you saw he had character drawing chops He's specifically stylizing his stuff to an extreme yeah. level right. to make it stand out, to make it interesting. Yeah, I, I call it like earning the right to to um you know uh, simplify your stuff. When when and I think it's a big mistake from artists. It's like like they look at Mignola as an example and they're learning to draw and they go, Well, like I can't draw realistically, so I'm just gonna try to start as Mignola. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's Gotta like I learned the fundamentals. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work that way. And it's it's like it, yeah. it's like you're jumping the gun to simplicity. This is just a bad scan. Oh see. yeah. Oh wow. A lot of these low res ones. Yeah, this is I'm not sure what these are. So did they ever do one of those Marvel uh, essentials, the black and white versions of all this Namor stuff? Uh there's a possibility. I I I, I mean Namor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I the dick name. Um, I, I would, oh, sorry. I would say that there, there possibly could be one. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, I finally found all the Jim Lee, uh, stuff as an X-Men essential, but they right. scanned it from the comics. Right. So it's all the color is in grayscale. I'm like, what is it? You, the, the one we're all waiting for, like the most, the whole generation of us at least. And you do this. Thank you. You know, great yeah. job. Well, the, the the rub with Jay's stuff too is you have to remember that he started on issue twenty six. I mean, that would have to be the second collection of it. Yeah, it right. Probably, it wouldn't be in the first, and that's I don't know how well the first one would have ever God, sold. Look at that! That is insane. <laughs> this is all blade. I mean, you can definitely see that he took a razor blade and chopped through this. Yeah, he's got dry brushing in there. Some uh, watery black ink too. I feel this way, like I feel this way every once in a while, where I, I'll just want to throw paint, throw ink around, and like uh, try to create something. You know, like I, I doubt he did a whole whole lot of penciling on this either. You know, he just right. kind of drew out some basic shapes, and then just went to town. But I, you know, I think you just have to have it in you. Like I, I mine don't look this good <laughs> when I try this kind of stuff. It's hard. And and I look at these, he's got these nice thick lines in here, but then he all yeah. of a sudden gets to the thin sweepy ones. And in here too, this beautiful, just sort of casual. How do you, walk. how do you do that and not mess it up? You know, like there's. <laughs> he knows when to, to sort of wrap it up, you know, I guess so. This, this almost reminds me of straw art where you blow on ink and it sort oh, of yeah. ink around a little bit. It almost yeah. Like that. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's interesting. Tom I wonder if Coker. he's ever tried that. <laughs> Tom Tom Coker will use that effect or used to. Um, oh. Tom's great. So this is yeah, J or uh, Hell Shock. Yeah, yeah, I love the blown out quality of the woman. Uh, the guy's face. I don't know. It's too much. Too much time. Yeah, it's so weird, right? Yeah, not, more more like, of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like yeah, the yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really wild. That's um that's not quite a Jay Lee face, but it is. <laughs> the bottom I half like... looks like somebody else, kind of. Is this zipatone? This looks like zip. I mean, it could be just drawn, it wouldn't be that hard, but it's hard to tell. You, you gotta wonder. Like it's it's probably zip. Yeah, because you could well, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I think it's zip. Travis would draw something like that. <laughs> You will look at look at the styling of the swirls on the yeah, jacket, yeah, the which jacket. he he did that by hand, so yeah, it, it, it lacks. Like yeah, it doesn't have the same line quality. So I love the way he rendered this guy's face. Oh my gosh, he's so good. He would have God. Can imagine how fun it would be to have seen him draw some of these pages. Uh, okay, McQuit McQuitsley uh, says it's like jazz punk rock metal. Yeah, it yeah, is. Right? 
Oh, God. Okay, here we go. I'm pretty sure this is where Jay starts inking himself. The shit gets good. I just saw that Bisley, um, not swipe, we won't call it, but uh, the homage to Bisley. So here we go. Let's we'll go full screen mode. This is some badass stuff. Yeah. Oh, so See, Namor look, at, I'm seeing some interesting stuff here. Like, uh, Hellshock work was incredible from ABBA. Uh, Adratize and Humans was peak J. See, that there's different levels of J and we each kind of have like our own thing. Cause like by the time in humans came out, I, I was kind of like, this is more in this whole other kind of style. I'm not too into it, but then like now I'm looking back on it like, Oh man, you know, I'm seeing the, the value in it, but it's like a whole other thing. So it's interesting kind of seeing where people like fall in like, Oh, this is where it hits for me. Yeah. Like, yeah, this stuff up to the wildcats is probably like peak for me. And that was yeah. early. That was early, Jay. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I actually, I really like Ozzy Mandius a lot. Um, yeah, totally. I, I like the Dark Tower stuff. Century. It, it gets a little swirly for me. Yeah, um, that's a whole other kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But now, again, we haven't really looked at the best uh, Namor stuff yet. Right yeah. now, we're getting into like this is where like you're gonna like if you're going, ah, this stuff isn't that good. Trust me, the next like four or five books we look at are gonna. They're really good. This is a real interesting test to see how how much uh, the people really embrace the 90s style. You know, like we hear this a lot. Oh, I'm all into the 90s style and the 90s style. I, I see this as like the where it – well, actually, I would say actually um, Stephen, Stephen Platt was probably the yeah. – when it hit its zenith. But this is definitely headed in that direction. Those, you know? those guys, I, I'm, I'm so influenced by Jay and Stephen Platt. People haven't really seen it in my work as an inker because I've yeah. never really had the opportunity to like let that loose. But I'm telling you, I, I draw so fast and I want to work so quick. Mm. And and I, this is what I what I really want to do is is stuff like this, not not hey. to emulate them, but just to just rip rip through stuff. You know. Hey, speaking of that, speaking of that straw technique, he's using that there, isn't he? Yeah, looks like it. <laughs> that looks so cool. It looks like roots. Yeah, it's really wild, right? It is. It totally is that that technique. That's funny. It is. Yeah, you put ink down wet, and you take a straw, and you just blow on it, and you can kind of move it around, and it'll sort of... Um, I don't know if Jay used smooth or rough board, but different board will have different um you know characteristics when you do the technique so it's always you know good idea to, to experiment with rough and smooth board and see what you know what gets the looks you like yeah um there's some great comments uh humongous featuring auto maton uh, um i never liked the 90s style it was too over the top uh, over dramatic for me i think that's what got us you know because it, it went from like uh relatively boring you know and straight on stagnant shots people standing around to like the height of drama and like and then it went to an extreme and then it's it, you know lately it's been pulled back and now it's been pulled back to such an extreme that now i find them quite boring so it's like now we're trying to like it's almost like when digital tech digital technology took over special effects and then we went to the extreme of that. And now we're pulling back a little bit going, well, we need to have a little toe in the old world and a toe in the new world to kind of make this new thing moving forward. And I think that's a lot of what, like, I think Rich and I are looking is like, how can we take that excitement, that spontaneity, that, uh, you know, that creative uh, fearlessness that they used to have. And, and apply it to like strong, you know, substantial like storytelling and things like that. I'm going to lighten know? this a little bit. Man, this is a great looking page. Yeah. What is that? Is it like a robot dude? It's Dr. Doom. Oh, okay. Yeah. That it is a, kind of a robot dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, Do it's Dr. Doom. This is such a badass panel. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And and so one of the things that I, I said that we would touch on a little bit is Jay's impact on artists after him. Uh, yeah. People like I honestly, I mean, I have to believe that a little bit of Jim's death blow style, although we know that it kind of came from Frank Miller as well. Uh, yeah. It's almost like Jim kind of put Frank Miller and Jay Lee in a blender. Well, I was about to say I was looking at some of these silhouette shots you were showing, and it looked like 
this this was Sin City before Sin City, you know? Some of that stuff looked like the same kind of thing. Yeah, it's interesting. Do, do you, uh, well, Sin City, what, when did it start showing them Dark Horse Presents? Oh my God, this is so good. Even the Dark Horse Presents, it started off as a whole different style and then oh. it didn't really catch on to that full, full blown high contrast look until like uh, the third part of that Dark Horse right. Presents when they're like trapped in that, in that, uh, sell him and the woman right. with like no hand. The guy like ate her hand off. <laughs> I uh, yeah, so I don't know. That felt like probably about the same time, ninety ninety one. So yeah, I don't know. This has got uh, a little a bit of question. That, the Bisley arm thing that I was talking about. You're gonna see it again in this issue, but but like right in here that um, you know, Bisley had a lot of shots with yeah, the, very very similar to that. Yeah, um, you're right. That's also the same time Hellboy started. So like all this stuff kind of like coalesced you oh, know yeah. this using of of silhouettes and shadow and look at the colors on this page i like it a lot yeah this color is rocking it it's so cool look how dark this uh blood is right here or whatever. It, it, it does have the feel of like deep ocean you know that dark background yeah kind of blue green color yeah, it's so yeah cool. Jasper Plan 9 brings up Starenko was doing Sin City before Sin City. Yeah, exactly. It, it, ultimately, it came from a lot of guys. I mean, even um, Toth uh, and then, I mean, even uh, the dude, Steve Rude was doing it in early works of like that he was doing uh, for Marvel or for DC. Uh, he had a bunch of that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, it's been around. <laughs> oh, this is a nice figure. But who really creates it? The guy that created it or the guy that popularizes it? <laughs> I, you know, I saw a musician talking about about that, and and uh, he's a really, really good guitarist. He's dead, Danny Gatton. But Danny Gatton was basically saying that, like, it's like every new generation of artists, whether you want to admit that you're influenced by the stuff from the past, I mean, it's nearly impossible not to be. And it's such a blender of, of like, you might have got it from Artist X, but artist X got it from blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And it just mm -hmm. all, it just keeps funneling through each generation. And so I, you know, I, I recommend to people don't really worry so much about your influences as much as mm -hmm. just draw the way that you think it looks the coolest mm -hmm. and, and try to do it the best that you can. Your styles are going to come out naturally. If you yeah. want to be rough, you'll be rough. If you want to be clean, you know, lean, lean that way. See, I, I, I can't help but avoid, a certain level of because i've spent so long learning how to do it kind of the right way and now right. i'm kind of pulling back and trying to like okay now i know how to do it all the right way my stuff looks a little boring so like now i'm looking back at some of this stuff kind of like how can i inject some of that raw excitement that these yeah. guys had uh, but with all the you know the knowledge of storytelling and things like that and anatomy and so it's like yeah just trying to draw a little inspiration from this stuff um not necessarily going to be like aping the style yeah uh but i don't know some of it the splatter i'm like i want to get back to some splatter i like that look <laughs> look at this co the colors on this are so freaking cool man yeah god it's great looking i'm curious i've done this poll a lot and i think our audience is generally more interested in the old school coloring you know the more flat uh, right. i think i think maybe the full rendered stuff has run its course so it's not like right but then now. you see like kyle doing like cyber frog for instance or his own book and it's like right. it's so well done and yeah. I, you, everything is very clear and easy to read i think when you can do it and do it like that where it's not muddy then it's great but like when you have a style like this you really want you don't want to do too much because you'll choke off the style it'll get too dark man this is great so there's there's two things that, that popped into my mind when you said that which is um i thought of uh steven platt on soul saga so soul saga i want to say had steve uh, co colors um, um yeah no it had liquid coloring liquid okay so yeah. so one one good thing about liquid is liquid to me and because i was going to mention joe matter rare on battle chasers too also liquid yeah yeah so what, what liquid does that i think is actually really really cool is that they they do have that airbrush very very sort of slick metallic 
coloring yeah. approach, even on skin, but they do those harder cuts. You get the cartoony sort of um, like, you know, a swatch of color, a swatch of color, a swatch of color. And I think that that helps bridge the gap. Yeah. Completely airbrush colors to me just looks weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, there's some, uh, the Vasic says when Jay Lee started referencing stuff like Norman Rockwell and his more recent work became some, something I, truly original. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I totally caught that too, Vasic. I, yeah. I know for a fact that, that like um, some of the running poses that he does with the kids, they're right out of Rockwell. Piece. Yeah. So this was the one that I was saying is very busily. And I, yeah. I really see it. It is. Yeah. It's, uh, I oh, can. And you know, we forgot someone. I don't know how we did it. Sam Keith. It totally oh, yeah. But S Sam Keith is a big influence on this work, too. The Marvel Comics Presents, forget about it. Well, it's it's obviously, like, at the time, he was very influenced by the energy that a lot of these guys had in their work. And it's like today, there's um, kind of a quiet elegance to his stuff. So it's like yeah. you could almost sense his state of mind in his work. Like, right here, he's... He's racing deadlines. He's got youth of, you know, energy of youth, uh, full of excitement. And then, like, now you could probably, you can assume that he's probably in a very healthy place. He's relaxed, right. you know. <laughs> Except when Tom King tries to cancel. Him. <laughs> yeah. We'll start seeing some more violence come out in his work. Yeah. <laughs> some harder I, I, edges. This fuchsia color is actually very cool on this panel. I love it. I love this old stuff. I, it and just... this, this, is, this is so busily right here. Mm -hmm. The hair, the eye. Oh my gosh, it's hysterical. Yeah. yeah. This has got a very 2000 AD, and this is very Kevin Nolan, you know. <laughs> Fabrizio says, uh, listening to quiet jazz as he draws. I've heard artists say that. Some of the, some, I've Look heard friends of mine say that they draw some of their most violent imagery listening to like classical music. <laughs> now, so so when we were talking about books um that we we you know like out of his canon that we like i i really wish that his fantastic four story would have looked more like this yeah no kidding like yeah. it, it would have been uh, probably easier for him to draw but i know he was he was evolving and getting into other things but man i i would be all over a fantastic four book that looked like this oh i'll, man. I'll get right on it <laughs> yeah, right? look at this yeah I mean, there's nothing to say that you can't like, you know, for if you can. Oh, oh dude, this is where it really starts to kick off. <laughs> this is a poster. This is. I love. I love these these creepy dudes right here. It's so badass. Take all the dialogue out, but leave the headline "Blood of the Warrior" and like yeah. that's a kick-ass poster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. You throw it on your wall and never want to take it down. Some guy that doesn't even know who Doctor Doom is will look at this and go, "This is like a metal album." Sweet. How, how is Jay Lee never done a Spawn issue? Like that to me is just a crime against Zumanity. How has he never it. done a an, a metal album cover? You know, yeah, right. <laughs> he needs to do a Hellboy story. Akira. I was. I would say everyone has to do Akira, mm -hmm. and then uh, and uh, Spawn. Oh, did you hear about uh, speaking of Kira? This is a bit of a sidebar here, but there I just saw this video about. Oh, it's colored by Glennis Oliver, by the way. Just oh, so I love Glennis Oliver. She does yeah. great work. Um, the uh, there's a thing online called Bart Kira, and Bart. it's yeah, it's the entire story of Akira, uh -huh. like every page redone with the cast of The Simpsons. Really. Yeah, That's so crazy. like Tetsuo is the the nerdy kid um with the oh, glasses. Uh, Millhouse. 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 Yeah. So that's out there if anybody wants to see that. <laughs> that's funny. All right, so now we're going to look at wow. uh, Namor 33. I love this. Exciting. It's Lobo getting punched in the face. No. <laughs> he's got fancy hair. Look, he's got it like up in like a bone knot. Triple triple <laughs> bone knot curls. <laughs> That could be, yeah, it's all flying through the air, though, because they're getting punched. For a second, that, I thought it said Shine Down, and that's like a that's like a new <laughs> rock band. Or I don't know what they call it. I call it Stripper Rock. Yeah. So this, now this is funny, because this is not as splattery as the other stuff. He actually does, he seems to be a little reserved on this. Yeah, no, t he lost his brush. Where's my splatter brush? His brush got gone. The face is a little different, too. 
I'm actually, I'm going to do this. We're going to check really quick and make sure that this is all J. Oh, that is. Yeah. This you know, had, had some I, of the hard edges of like the, uh, that you see in like, uh, the X factor. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> I, I love know. this stuff. Look at this. Very Sienkiewicz. <laughs> it's so nineties. It <laughs> I was just thinking, uh, Man, a movie like this would be cool. And then I then it suddenly it popped into my head. It's like, oh, I've seen hundreds of these movies in the 90s. <laughs> All these dramatic close-ups and whatnot. This is December 1992. So this yeah. is what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna speculate that that this is literally right around the time that Jay's probably getting hit up by Rob Liefeld and possibly mm. even Jim Lee to come to image because I'm nearly sure he fast tracked the final issues of this book. Um, there's a there's a really good, quite long interview from Emerald City Comic Con with Jay oh, um, that you can find on YouTube. It's worth listening to. The audio is horrible. It's very, very quiet. But um, you can crank it and listen to it. But uh, he talks talks about his transition from um, uh, Marvel to, to Image. But uh, God, he's just crushing it here. He's got such a unique style. Brando is wondering who we're showing. This is Jay Lee, early, early Jay Lee, Namor uh, comics. She's pretty. I like that. Or Namor. Potato, oh, potato. Know, I was going to say, when we were looking at the last issue, I, I kind of froze on a head for like a long time. Um, mm. It was, uh, I, I, can you imagine if he would have had access to like Sergio Topi or some of the Italian like artists? Like, like, cause he probably didn't know that stuff then. But man, that would have had a big impact on him, I think. Yeah. I've wondered that too. Like maybe even, um, uh, who am I thinking of that does does a lot of Punisher? He did uh, Winter World, uh, Zafino. Oh, uh, yeah, Zafino. Yeah, he may have seen Zafino. It's possible because Zafino does a lot of splatter, a lot of white over black, over white over black. You know, creating effects like this. That That's almost good. looks like uh, the stretch on the photocopier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, Bacalo at this point is is getting involved in this kind of look a little bit too. He's probably at Vertigo, about to head to Marvel. Yeah, right around what? that. What was he doing yeah. at Vertigo? Uh, he did um, Death. He did Death. He did Death at Vertigo, and also um, Shade the Changing Man. And oh, you're talking about Bacalo? Bacalo, yeah. But Bacalo was doing this rougher sort of yeah. uh, style. And then went to um, Marvel and did Generation Next. Yeah, and that had a lot of elements of that. But that was, yeah. what, that was like 93? That was around the same time, isn't it? 94? Yeah, that's, that's why I'm saying that they were kind of running yeah. parallel lives. And then and then when Marvel launched the 2099 line, you've got um, Mark Buckingham starts to run with a style like this. And then yeah. Ashley Wood transposes from a, a cartoony Chris Boccolo style. If you see Ash's early work, he was not gritty at all. He mm -hmm. looked like he looked like that fun period of Chris Boccolo that I know you're not a huge fan of. Um and uh and then turned into Ashley Wood. Yeah he went he got into Sinkevich and uh yeah. um Jay Lee probably and all the because yeah, he had sure. yeah he had a, like all this and uh what with a little bit of uh of uh uh who's a guy who did all the death covers or Sandman covers. Um, oh, Keith McKeon. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. It's nicely drawn. You know, I wouldn't the, think that he inked this. This is wild. You know, and, and the colors feel a little different to me too. I'm like, yeah. is it, do you think this is still Glennis? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. They're probably yeah. all rushing it, you know, cause he was, he was yeah. under gun probably, probably working on other pages <laughs> he was already working on uh on some young blood stuff in the background <laughs> right <laughs> squeaking this out I, I, it, it would be interesting it's it's like um yeah i wonder I, I wonder if at this point he was able to do three or four pages a day that's crazy mm. though. well the colorist probably had to do the whole book in like one day you know one sitting i wonder you know. Man, filling in blacks takes a long time. I mean, honestly, it's like even working with this much black, boy, to fill in all the black areas, that can take an hour or two, you know? Well, that's why you see him just, I mean, the the effects, see how it's like the effects are going in? I mean, he's started yeah. over there finally inking around uh, uh, Fist, uh, what's his name there? Um, yeah, Iron. and then Iron Fist. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then it's just dry brush. 
And then he goes over the top of that with the white, the white, uh, whiteout pin. Yeah. Did they have the white? They must have had the whiteout pin then, because oh, yeah, that looks correct. like whiteout yeah. pin. Yeah. 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 Pretty wild. It looks like he even drew in the belt buckle with it. Oh, that's right. He did a couple issues of Spider Man. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They're good. They're 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 pretty cool. Oh, this is great. Damn. Man, that guy is so good. Yeah. Right here. With the Spider-Man Iron Fist. Yeah, yep, those are great. Another fantastic hand, too. This like, was December, probably 93 as well. It's crazy, right? Like He, was he so must have been right? just cranking it out. We'll I see. mean, honestly, like like uh, his page rate at Marvel might have been 93. Very, very low. 93, like, I mean, yeah. He could have been just getting a couple hundred bucks a page for this stuff, you know? Maybe two, maybe two twenty-five a page for pencils and inks. Wow, yeah, that's still it's better than a lot of people are getting today. <laughs> yeah, I know. well, that's I I had posted that thing a while ago about Frazetta was was making more in like the fifties uh, doing like comic work than car artists yeah. now. That's seventy years ago. That's scary. Yeah, all those all that uh great uh, Ninja Turtle stuff being done at IDW right now twenty five dollars a page. Right, that's guarantee disturbing. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They always, they always kind of give you the warning. They're like, "Look, we can't really afford to pay a lot," and you're like, well, "What's not a lot?" And then they tell you, and you're like, "Oh, oh, God. that's you. You really mean it." I. <laughs> this is great because the colorist is taking advantage of, of what he's doing in the white perfectly. Because yeah. that looks like, like without the without the color there, I don't know that it would read quite like it's reading right now. It does have a water feel right. to it, you know. It's, it's a little tricky because of the texture of the paper to remove the um the uh all the color, like the di right. digital stuff it works better, but you can see there's a little bit of that crystallization. See, there. the colorist is just reading that and going, that, Oh, yeah, yeah, all that, yeah. Look at this. I didn't even realize that there was light posts there, yeah. <laughs> Did you? I didn't see him before. Yeah, oh, yeah, I was looking at that. Was... Had a fire escape and, and uh, <laughs> yeah. like in the building. Yeah, that's crazy. It was so hidden. Oh, this is an interesting question. The Vasic, uh, does uh, anyone know how much the sales increase uh, Namor saw when Jayla took over? That's interesting. Uh, or decrease. <laughs> <clears throat> traditionally speaking, I mean, as a book goes along, the sales slowly just keep dropping. Um, so but then you'll have spikes when right. other artists kind of jump yeah. on. Like for instance, uh, when uh, uh, when Stephen Platt, who's another name I keep bringing up in this one, but when he took over on Moon Knight, suddenly people were like, "Moon Knight? What the hell? I didn't even yeah. know that was still going." You know? <laughs> yep. And then it was so good, and it wasn't good. Like I, I'm, I no, I know you go back and it, it doesn't it doesn't hold up as well as you remember it. The, I, yeah. I agree with that whenever I break them out, I'm always like, eh. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I see what he's doing here, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I but that shows you how he really shook it up, though. It was different. Yeah, was so wild. Look at this. That is wicked character design, though. Yeah. He is so good. Man. Uh, okay, so let's, we're going into another one. Oh, this is a nice page. I actually like this with the Zipatone. A Seneca 5050 says, shoot the latest project I was working on at $25 a page. That's ink and coloring, drawing, and letters. Yep. That's oh, we are entering the dark ages. The, we're going to get rid of a lot of dead weight. The good news lose. Is, though, is that uh, they're, they have Netflix deals. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. No, I we're going to be, we're going to be dropping loads of dead weight. The only, only people are going to be sticking around are the people that really love it. We're going to build it back better, stronger, the, faster the than the real thing. The best of the best. I told, I said that recently. I said, I, I like, I would do, I'm doing comic books until I'm pushing up daisies. Oh, yeah. So I, I you know, that's what I want to do is I just want to draw kick ass stories for comics. That's it. Yeah. So with this, I'm betting, I, I, I was watching some of uh, Finch's um, how to's and I've seen uh, how he, uh, he's very sy systematic, but the way uh -huh. he'll, the way he'll do a lot of his block placement that. is he kind of throws it down and then mm -hmm. he'll render the feathering out of that. Yeah. Um, it just seemed very like, uh, 
a lot a lot more simple than I used to think about it. I guess penciling it out, you know, but he's inking it himself. But I bet Jay is doing that kind of thing there too, where right. you know, like in that cover shot that you'd showed. I think he's just kind of like taking a brush and just blah, 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 really fast right, and going in with the pen and just yeah. Yeah, I could see that where it's like like you like you said, just taking the brush and putting in this stuff. Yeah. And then like, uh, okay, it needs a little bit of lines here, and then yeah. we'll do a little flatter. And then he's like, Oh, too much. Where's my whiteout pen? You know? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it, it's really, really a shame that there's not more um uh heritage auction size scans of this work. Unfortunately, there's very, very few up there, but the ones that are there are, are worth their weight in gold because you can kind of try to reverse engineer, excuse wow, me, a little like bit of, of what he did. This is a beautiful spread. I like the way he does the the spreads where it's almost like a fashion ad or something. You know, like yeah. I don't know, yeah. it, they're just pretty cool. Guess, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're not. Or, um, he's so much about style. You know, it's not. Figure. Look at this. This is the, the, this is again very very Kevin Nolan. I think Kevin yeah. Nolan to me is probably one of the the Kevin Nolan, Bisley, and I'm gonna say Sam Keith uh, mm. are are high up the list. Sin Cabbage too, but. Um, I think he got more out of Sam Keith in a weird way. Mm -hmm. I feel that. Like the Wolverine, I think, was more transferable to this work. Yeah. That stuff was huge for me. Oh, my God. That Sam yeah. Keith Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, when you see it, there's just very little that's ever been done that's like that. Guys, this is great. This shows you how lazy I am, though, because like all these guys that I've followed, I, I'm mm -hmm. just like, oh, no, this is too hard. And then I moved on. <laughs> so you, you spend like all day rendering all these little lines and you're just like ah oh, this is this is hard this reminds me a little bit of like a travis panel like travis sometimes will mm -hmm. do little things like that everything looks like it's from star wars but a little creepier i like the idea of having a silhouette on every page you know well, I, who who was it that said that oh um, why well, I, I always refer to joe matarera as like yeah. especially on battle chasers like he usually will have a very very nice silhouette on every single page I like that though. It's uh, you know, again, it just adds variety to you know all the different shots that you got to do, it and it speeds it up. It, yeah, it lets your eyes rest. You know, like that's a great way to put it. Yeah, the, yeah, such a. I mean, we look at this as like techniques to get faster, you know, or make it more exciting or whatever. But in it does have the effect of letting the reader kind of breathe for a minute. You know, uh, we're trying to impress not our peers. We're trying to impress <laughs> comic book readers. It's a completely different yeah. demographic. Yeah, well, that's that's what I'm doing now. I've I've spent a lot of time trying to impress my peers. It got nowhere. <laughs> well, well, and didn't you actually said uh, we were talking one time, and you said that like. Uh, like all your influences were those guys that were like the artists, artists. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, do, you remember, do you remember the conversation? And, and it well, was yeah, like, I came in liking, you know, uh, just whoever I could find, but then the slowest, sort of, they were the slowest guys that I gravitated them. to guys like Michael Golden, Adam Hughes, Stel Freeze, uh, eventually Travis and those guys. And those are all the guys that took longer than anybody to finish anything. So I'm like, oh, yeah. I kind of hamstrung myself in a way. Yeah. yeah. Jim but Lee told like, me one time, he goes, uh, like, who are your influences, Rich? And I, I, it's a very difficult question to answer, but I probably said like, oh, Brian Boland, Travis, yeah. and it was so, someone else that was like pretty tight and clean. And he goes, you need like, you need like a Simon Bisley influence. Like, like <laughs> he, did, he literally said that. He goes, you, you need, need like a Ron Wagner, Herb Trimpey in there somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, like like something that's a little more rough, like rough and faster. Like everyone that you're picking is all like these anal retentive, like it might have uh, I, yeah, I can't remember who the other one was, but this is very fashion ad. You know, I speak of Ron Wagner. I'm gonna send you some Ron Wagner that you might not know of. You might be thinking of Ron Wagner or G.I. Joe, but he went through several phases where he's done some stuff that I think you would blow your mind. That's very much like this with splatter and like. I'm thinking of the murderer of uh, Natalie Wood. No, oh no, no, no. That's uh, who was that? <laughs> I'm, I'm just joking. I, I don't know. I, yeah, yeah. Ron Wagner. I think I, I think he'll blow your mind because he has like the, the he has day. like the the anatomy down like a like a Garcia Lopez 
Okay. Uh, but he's doing panel layouts and like splattering and technique like this. Um, gosh, I wish I could I, remember I something. This right here, that is, those two panels right there are magical. Mm. Oh, Robert Wagner. That's the oh, Henry Beavis' oh. name. <laughs> <Right. laughs> it's like, why'd you do it, Robbie? <laughs> yeah. Man, this is so I, great. This is all silhouettes. Yes, I know. Well, that's why I said I don't know how an editor would let him get away with this shit. Like, there are sequences where, like, four or five pages in a row, they're all silhouettes. I've heard, I've heard that the greatest thing that, that you could do for an editor is just get it in on time. Yeah, but you know yeah. what? They, they definitely, as much as they want it in, they do want it to look good, and and mm -hmm. you, you want the callback for the next issue. And this is risky behavior. Granted, he probably in the back of his mind was like, "I'm going to image anyway. Let's just get this stuff done." But I tell you, like. You could get away with this for one page. I don't know if you turned in a second page with this many silhouettes. I just can't picture an editor going like, can we, can you draw the faces at least? Like, Unless I mean, they were having that visceral reaction that I'm having right now where I'm right. like, I'd rather see this than, you know. <laughs> no, no, I, I agree. And that's just some schmo, you know, that's the, that's the tricky thing about it is, is, um, you know, well, it looks like, like they colored another eye on his shoulder. Oh, right here. <laughs> yeah. I'll put a pupil in it for you there. All right. Uh, he has pointy, pointy eyes. Predator 7 says uh, we should do a South American artist next week. I got several. I can, we could definitely. Uh, yeah, if you have a recommendation, let us know too. A lot of greats in Argentina. Um, there's yeah. some, some guys from Mexico I really enjoy. Um, gosh, there's. Oh, we got a guy from Peru. Uh, Christian Rosado, who is kicking butt, so good. Yeah, this, Peru. This, almost, this feels like Zipatone, but I don't know if it is or not. It has to be. There's no way he's spending that much time <laughs> drawing perfectly spaced lines. Right. <laughs> if he is, I'd be like, you're you're prioritizing things completely wrong, Jay. Yeah, I love his <laughs> ships too. His ships are so fun. Yeah, man. I, I mean. Again, it's like you know, he's doing he's thinking of speed. How can yeah. I make it look interesting very fast? But it's like it has this effect of you know, I kind of want to see this in a movie, these this like stylings. Yeah. Oh, know? I dude, Fury Road had so much Jay Lee in it. There's no freaking spikes way. and yeah. Oh, and the colors. Oh, I love him in his it yeah. looked right out of it looked right out of a Jay Lee comic. They honestly, I almost felt like they should have paid the guy some money. This is right out of uh, World of Krypton, Mignola. I love all the Jimenez. Everybody that's got a name Jimenez, it's an artist, is pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Jorge Jimenez, the the newer penciler, is yeah, the, the digital artist. He's great. It's funny as I saw an artist last night who's drawing just like him oh. too. I knew it was only a matter of time, but uh. Yeah, here come the clones. Those eyes are right out of uh, Iron Mignola. Wolf. Yeah, yeah, it's Iron Wolf, Fires of the Revolution, or maybe the Gotham by Gaslight, but the, the eyebrows I, are straight up Jay. Yeah, <laughs> when I said this is out of World of Krypton by Mignola. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but who cares? Yeah, no, I know. And this is great. I love this, the stylish um, sort of patterns on these guys' cloaks. Some guy that j he's at the he's at the music store uh, buying a bunch of like metal albums, and then he goes into Seven Eleven. He sees that he don't know Mignola, but he's like, "Cool!" Oh hell yeah! <laughs> How many people smoked weed and looked at their Namor <laughs> comics in 1992? Probably many. Yeah, <laughs> but not many did that with Namor. But they they're did probably it listening to Soundgarden, Bad Motorfinger, and Alice in Chains, <laughs> and looking at their J. Lee comics. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. That's I've seen so this, cool. I've seen this like repeated so many times in comics. This figure, yeah. the silhouette with the long spindly fingers. Yeah. Yeah, there's certain things that kind of just resonate with people. They just continue it. Um, yeah, that, that's a great shot. Yeah. Good, good, good stuff. All right. Look yeah. at that. It looks like the it's like a little bit of the queen alien and a little bit of the alien warrior aliens kind of is design. that is that the brood though because they also have that's yeah. how they design the brood it looks like it oh uh, i thought it said brood here it says blood oh okay <laughs> the man called namor namor nay 
<laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself, but I'm still not 100% sure if it's dark seed or dark side. <laughs> I, I think it's both. I think it's it? it's spelled like dark seed, I think, but it's Yeah, I get nervous if I have to like read it and say it out loud, like I'm always like I'm sec I second guess myself immediately. I've been corrected. I used to say dark side and people are like it's dark seed and then I start saying dark seed and people are like no, it's dark side. And I'm like yeah. ah, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure right now having this conversation. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nuts. Uh, it is yeah. really cool. What is like what is the influence on that? That is some wild shit. I think it, I, he's starting to get influenced by himself at this point, you know. Like is he's, that what it is? yeah. Well, he's just like, I got what I want to do, and I got no time to be looking shit up. So he's just like, yeah. I know I'm gonna do this, do this, boom, boom, boom. And the next yeah. issue is one of my favorite, favorite double page spreads of all time. I can't yeah. wait to see it. It's so I good. I think I know which one you're talking about, too. <laughs> it's the one, one with the, like, the person with their arm out and the big crowd of like monster people. Oh, man. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Look at that. Who's that? It looks like Mojo or something. It does. Dark Soda. <laughs> oh, here's that effect again. Dumbest so name says this might, be the zip. this might be the zip again. It is. Yeah, he's straight up doing a zip pattern there. Uh, but it's great because he's used one that I've nobody ever uses. You know, he's like, I'm gonna use this one, and it fits. You know, um, I I've seen Bacalo and even um Sinkevich where they don't really use zipatone, but they use uh just like you know um wrapping paper or weird stuff like that you know where it's it's not necessarily that it was originally made for comics mm. um but it's, it's just something that they have a sheet of that they can cut out and put on their page <laughs> jasper plan nine says dark sod sade. <laughs> day is that it <laughs> like sade like sade yeah, yeah, yeah. from the singer <laughs> uh, abba says in north america it's dark side in europe it's pronounced dark seed <laughs> is it that's that what he's saying, but he laughs, so I'm not sure. Oh, he's pulling well, our well, leg. Yeah, that's never, great. I I'll love never, it. Yeah, isn't that cool? You know, and and look, the, the honest to god truth is, I've actually tried to emulate this a few times, like where you go, like, let's just give it a shot and see how it goes. It's not that easy to do and make it look good. It's like you really have to be working on just pure instinct, and and having yeah. done it, he's done it now on how many pages have we been through you right. know yeah exactly oh see this is very sam keith right here do you see yeah the the this is right out of um some of sam's work for sure i mean not to mention he's probably was doing several other issues at the same time of like spider-man and like uh doing the pencils for the you know yeah. of course that could have happened like immediately after that there's 12 if he's doing monthly and there's 12 months in a year, 93, he's doing 12 comics at least. He probably did at least 10, you know. No, this um, wasn't the spread I was thinking of. It must be. This is one of my faves. I love this. Love it. Another poster on my wall. Dark Awakenings. Yeah. Oh, so now the colorist on this is Dana Morsehead. Hmm. I don't know that one. Bob Harris wrote this. J. Lee artist. Dana Morsehead colorist. Sounds like another woman. What are all these women doing in comics? Yeah. At this time period. How dare they? Yeah. <laughs> there was a, there was another um, girl that I had seen recently, and I was like, oh, that's crazy. It was a photo from, I think, Marvel from the, like, 60s or 50s. And uh, there was a lot of women that worked for Oh, yeah. Marvel. Well, never mind. I remember Dana Schutz from Dark Horse, from all kinds That's of places. Really nice layout, man. Look at this. Uh, or Diana Schutz. Um, yeah, I oh, love that yeah. design. You know, the yeah. face face gear looks really wicked. <laughs> when you were saying that some of the stuff reminded you of stuff that you had seen in magazines at the time, like model pictures and stuff like this. But even this has a little bit of that fashion magazine vibe, just yeah. with, with all of his detail put over it. I mean, no, nobody was really drawn from fashion, you know, uh, and that that kind of elegance that, um, you know, even the guys have like kind of fashion model-esque yeah. qualities to them. I mean, cool. um, yeah, there's always this kind of like elegance, even as raw and as like crazy yeah. as this stuff is, there's, there is kind of like this, um, 
design this i don't i don't even know the word for it there's probably a french word for it <laughs> i'm sure there is Cunning uh, kind, of, no. kind of yeah <laughs> je ne sais quoi <laughs> this is cool this almost feels like a daredevil panel yeah yeah it's the red <laughs> oh my god oh look this is the thing that i use for the thumbnail i love this piece uh, i i swear it's like a, a cindy crawford or something but right. i mean uh, the, the it's just so perfectly done the color accentuates the design of it like perfectly I mean, it's yeah. really great is um is this picture from like the same shoot then or just oh, i don't know okay. I, I, honestly he could be just making up a lot of this stuff right. uh, but oh, a lot of panels inspired great. by you know not that he's riffing off everything but Dude, could you imagine like if they did like another 300 story and he drew it in this style right here oh my that'd be god killer. it'd be so intense that's see that's what you get see this is what you know you, you gotta apply it appropriately but i say that but the who would have who would have thought to put it with namor i mean you know, i think well, it actually kind of works i actually i i uh talked to jay uh probably six years ago at san diego comic-con and I asked him, I said, uh, we were going to talk on the phone and we ended up talking in person. But uh, I said, look, I go, I, I have a propensity to do really, really dark art. And I'm concerned that it's going to alienate fans. I'm concerned that it's going to be very, very difficult to get work with this. And I said, mm -hmm. what was it like for you being like the dark artist for so long? And he said, honestly, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's a lot of jobs that that aren't appropriate for him. And uh, he definitely was like, you know, it's it can be challenging at times. He's so successful, you wouldn't think that it would be, but you know what I mean. Like, he'll when, never get that Scooby Doo gig, you know. Well, but you know, okay, like, say <laughs> if, Marvel, if Marvel was going to do Civil War five in twenty twenty five, Civil War five is happening. Like, they, I, I would imagine that they would give him an opportunity to work on something like that, but you never know. They might go. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we need. I know things are different now, but I'm saying like, like, yeah, back then, yeah. Normal Marvel. <laughs> Here's a couple uh, of fun uh, comments about the uh, fashion. Jasper Plan Nine says Tucci was influenced by specific fashion art. He was actually a fashion right. designer, I think, or at least right. an artist. Uh, and the Vasic says very Patrick Nagel on coloring and art. Yeah, that's I, a whole other level. Yeah, I know. I know. I was totally seeing the Nagel and the stuff too. I completely mm -hmm. agree. And that flat coloring really brings that out. Yeah. yeah. Man, this is a great page too. These the god, these freaking pages are so kick ass. Silhouettes. I mean, it's it's probably easier said than done because you're like, oh, the, look how easy this is. No backgrounds, no yeah. I'm just doing that. But no, he, he's doing great composition. If you yeah. notice the figures move across the page left and right, yeah. Uh he's he's doing a lot here that you know you probably it would probably be easy to to not consider you know you're like oh this is easy it's all silhouettes now nah, there's there's a certain art that he's doing here and he's got a finesse to it so this this reminds me of there's a mignola detective comics cover that he did with batman coming out of the water and there's yeah. all these hands coming up around him these these hands look yeah. very similar to, to some of that it's those funny. he did two covers uh, and those were inked by george pratt oh, uh, which so good. i actually really liked mignola oh. inked by pratt i was like this has like a really neat quality to it yep yeah i know what oh, you're talking God. about we talk about so much fun stuff <laughs> our super fun sundays are truly super fun oh yeah look at that guy's got that guy's chin has bat wings yeah <laughs> wow Look at that hair. I mean, it's just so there's just there was nothing like this. No, yeah, this is, this is like uh the more of a hairstyle you'd see now, really. Let's see, would it work for modern comic books, if not graphic or horror comic in mind? I, I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of standing around and giant word balloons spilling out stuff. So yeah, it'd probably work so great. We've seen, this, we've seen this page in black and white. That was one of the oh yeah. Oh, this yeah. panel is great, man. That's cool. I think I think right now anything could work, and it's so funny because like somebody was asking me about what's the next fad, like movies, and I was like, I don't think there is one. I think they're gonna be throwing everything they can against the wall. And the other day, I went and looked at the movie trailers, and there's like a western, there's a sci-fi, there's some like thing about 
Hugh Jackman and his memories. I mean, it's like there's no consistency whatsoever. So would this style work today? Sure. There's going to be a whole bunch of us if you do it well. There'll be like, oh, yeah, that's like the Namor kind of thing style going on that Jay was doing, you know, or whatever. There's, I think there's room for like anything right now. Well, the one the the one blaster kid piece I did with the two guys with the guns. I mean, that's kind of me doing, uh, not yeah. daily, but but uh, I mean, it's it's. I drew it as fast as I literally could. That was the test. Was how fast can I draw something kick ass and will it look good? And it's still my favorite piece that I've done of of those those test pieces. And you like <laughs> it too. You know what I mean? Uh, Dustin Rogers says one of my favorite parts of Super Fun Sundays when Kelsey says that's great. <laughs> And then uh, Brando says, "Is that computer colored?" Yeah, this like, is very, very early computer coloring. I think computer I like separation. When, I like when Kelsey really likes something, and he goes, Mwah. "Yeah." Mwah. <laughs> so this it's is like, it's like a chef, man. That's just delicious. Yeah. Ma. So, so this good. is this is from Giger. Um, uh, oh yeah, for sure. So the next page is the spread that I was talking about. It's the 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 spread to all end all spreads. Although the colors are a little wacky on it, I actually we've got to do it in black and white because that's a little too wild style, even for me. Even Sam for Reeves, them. yeah, Sam Reeves says it. It seems these pages not only create a focal point for each panel, but they create a big picture focal point for the whole page. Yeah, that's kind of the image thing. Uh, who who started that? Was that was uh, that whose what, philosophy uh, was that? Was that uh, McFarlane? It was like you well, do a central a central hook image on a page, like a you, because like they they even um, Michael Turner talks about this, uh, 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 Jim Lee, um, uh, McFarlane, Silvestri, they all do the same kind of thing where you you have a central image, you know, a main panel, and then you kind right. of put everything else around that. Well, I watched that Michael Golden DVD. I don't know if you saw me tweet that um, I I had I bought a Michael Golden like DVD. Yeah, he I got that too. <laughs> it's funny. It, he talks about like storytelling in the '90s and how it's not <laughs> storytelling, but that's probably shit that bugged him was you know coming up with a jerk shot on every panel and then building <laughs> the storytelling around it. I mean, I like both. Of, like the way I like in that style too is like in a movie where you have like your nice establishing shot. And then you do uh, nice um, uh, medium shots of characters talking. And then you have insert shots of like close-ups of a watch, close-ups of a bullet going into a gun, close-up of a, you know what I mean? So yeah. that way you don't have to show a full shot of the guy putting the bullet in the gun, uh, looking at his watch, you know, that you can do that and you get a whole bunch done in one image, but you can deconstruct it and really kind of play with the, uh, you know, how people are perceiving the moment. You add drama to each of those elements, you know, if you're trying to build on tension or whatever. So I just connected the dots. Do you remember when I had mentioned Topi a little while ago? Look at that. That's some Topi. Well, so no, but here's the deal. This is what it actually is. This is him doing Bill Sienkiewicz, and it's Bill Sienkiewicz doing Gustav <laughs> Klimt. <laughs> Guaranteed. This but is, that this... rendering is straight up uh like Topi yeah, it's, style. It's kind of it's kind of Klimt-ish though. But I like I said, I think mm. my, my guess is gonna be that he got this from Bill Sinkevich and Sinkevich was channeling Klimt, but Klimt probably influenced Topi. So yeah, I was like, about to say, does that mean Topi is doing some Klimt? <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. I think that's I think that's maybe the um the paper trail on this who knows that, but see that's that's what makes it fun but some young artists might only see this and do this and have no idea of of some of the other puzzle pieces now to so, topi is italian or is he yeah. spanish okay uh no topi is italian for sure there's 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 some group of guys and i swear i think they're if i think they got to be argentina uh if not the philippines i don't think the philippines but there's they do the the swirl or the way they do the rendering, like they yeah. won't black it out and they'll just kind of do squiggles and designs that you see Toby do. But I think they do yeah. that a lot in, gosh, I want to say Argentina, but I could be wrong. But uh, pages, I love that look. These pages are starting to look like I'm heading the image. <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's like I just need to get this shit done. They're not bad, but it's like these don't <laughs> the silhouettes don't have the same uh, magic of a. Uh, there's a there's a real famous story, and I think he told this himself in like one of their wizard magazines that he uh, was so late on some of this stuff that the editors 
literally got on a plane and flew oh. to his house and were like banging on his door. Oh no. For pages. Yeah. Oh <laughs> so, my God. And it makes me wonder if it was because he was splitting duties, you know, I mean, maybe sp spending more time on that, you know, thousand dollar a page gig. Yeah. Well, in, you know, what's interesting is so the, the very first issue that Jay actually leaves Namor, Namor, um, uh, it's Jimmy Palmiotti and someone else. I think Jimmy Palmiotti did like finishes over someone. It's actually very, very cool. It's a, it's a strong issue that really has this flavor, but it's, mm. it's someone else penciled it and, and Palmiotti, um, I think, uh, maybe palmiati did breakdowns and then someone else finished it but wh whatever it is it's actually it's pretty cool it's not bad uh, sam reeves said he bought a brush and uh for inks today so fingers crossed good luck man yeah yeah you're gonna ruin you'll ruin quite a few brushes early on at least the, i know i did um that uh yeah brushes are, are delicate things especially if you're trying to do finessey stuff but uh just you know be patient understand that is part of the process Okay, we'll do this last issue and then we should get going because it's almost 1230. Yeah, I would say don't be afraid uh, and just dive in there and see what you could do with the brush. Thins, thicks, dry brush, yeah, sideways. You could do a lot with a brush. Just dig yeah. in there and see what you could do. And just make sure when you're done using it, clean it in clean water. Just sort of shake yeah. it around in clean water. And don't let, don't let ink sit on it because it'll dry and then it'll make your brush... Um, poofy when i actually won't. have i have a soap uh it's not a brush soap you can't i don't but don't use like ivory and stuff or like some because i put a lot of different stuff in their soap but just a good clean natural soap just a tiny bit and then just kind of roll it in your hand with wa fresh water kind of pouring through it and you'll see the ink just pouring out of it you oh, know right. and then when the ink just stops you know I, i'll do it. i'll give it a little lick you know just you know yeah. through the mouth to sharpen it yeah, most most inkers do. This is a real nice drawing. I was. We all know the taste of ink. Yeah, because <laughs> I've done it. I've done it without it clean. I'm like, oh sh. <laughs> yeah, that's like a fashion ad for Namor. Yeah, Namor sporting the new gold uh, chalice, uh, whatever so chest cool. plate, and razor sharp gauntlets. <laughs> so you figure Jay Jay's probably 19 or 20 at this point. He's, oh wow. He's, He's still very young. Um, probably had been driving, drawing for four or five years at that point. You know, you figure he probably started when he was fourteen or fifteen, kind of aiming towards this goal. He he talked about um, he lived um, near a comic book artist who kind of helped mentor him a little bit in terms of. Um, I think he did some assistant work for someone. I can't remember who it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, real quick, uh, Sam Reeves says, "Can you use like dish soap?" Uh, you can, but I just use a very, very tiny bit. You don't need I, 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 if at I, all. Yeah, I honestly, you, clean water will be fine. Yeah. You just, just, you know, do you just want to make sure that you don't leave ink on the brush overnight? Yeah. Or I just kind of like, I cut my hand and like in the water, let the water kind of flow through. And then I roll the brush through this part of my hand. Like just pull, I pull it through and it just kind of rolls into, a, you know, the, its shape. Hey, You'll Sam. just see the ink flow out of it. If this is the brush tip, I want to tell you something too really quick. This is a good tip for anyone. So if this is the brush tip, you really only want to put ink on about this much of the brush. Do not yeah. brush. It will seep up this way. But the thing is, is as soon as you start getting ink up in here in the brush, it starts to make your brush do this. And that's when your brush yeah. is going to be DOA. It'll so start yeah, splitting. You, just, you just want to get ink like right about there on your brush. Okay. That'll that'll help increase the longevity of it for sure. Adding a tad of a tad of water, or or at least rinsing your brush off and then dry it off on a paper towel so that it's still a little moist. Yeah. Sometimes that helps your ink flow real smoothly, but you got to be careful that it doesn't look too watery. Yeah, pretty um, much. How, any, God, I'm so jealous. You're gonna be having fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, the, the I almost always uh, will dip my brush in water. I take a towel, not a paper towel, but I use just like a towel towel and I sharpen it. So I just spin yeah. it on the towel and then um and get a pointed tip and and then I dip it in ink. So I'm always mm -hmm. dipping it in water first, but I dry it off. I'll sometimes uh, too have a little piece of paper next to me. And when I do dip it in ink, I'll roll some of the excess ink off the brush so that it's there's not too much ink before you start putting that line down because you can put that 
brush to the paper and then it just goes you know so you don't want too much ink on the brush this is yeah. kind of mcfarlane-ish in a way i don't know why this reminds me of todd a little yeah man the, i wish you could get the black and white it's a whole different thing uh yeah see it's the arms it's tough. yeah it's tough because of the newsprint um to get the to remove the gray is this if post it, dracula or did he create that armor uh that's a good question <laughs> the Bram stoker's dracula came out in like probably 92 or 93 okay so it's so around that time yeah. yeah yeah um if marvel ever reprints this on slick paper it'll actually be a lot easier to remove all this color i've always hoped yeah. that they would do that when they do those really glossy reprints mm. um, you'd be able to pull this color out no problem it would come out oh so yeah easy. and this wow. is that other piece this is the one that we had seen yeah, that's great. Yeah. Gosh, it looks so different in color. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it, yeah, it's really interesting. Man, what a cool shit. <laughs> Look at those chains. I, know. I, I do that now where it's like anytime I can get away with it, I'm silhouetting chains. No, screw it. I'm I'm yeah, silhouetting right. chains. If I can get away with it. <laughs> well, you just have to believe you can. Oh, we saw this page too. Why it has such a different effect. This is why you don't sweat the inks too, too much because you, you, you re got to realize that the color, I mean, uh, it hides a lot, but you know, and it holds things together. Um, like I used to really micromanage inks to the point where like, like Tim Townsend, if I have an ink uh, black outline, it's perfectly the same width all the way around. Right. right stuff like that that's not that necessary you can get close and it'll still read like that i had kind of said in passing in one of my patreon videos about um you know like you have to be comfortable being able to bullshit things and then someone kind of replied like oh cool i'll like start practicing you know like bullshitting things and i was like oh i'm like now i'm gonna teach a young generation of <laughs> that like the bullshit things it's like it's like so I'm like, try to do like educated bullshit. Like, yeah. like, like hopefully you know, like some of it and then you're kind of faking like beyond it. But like, yeah, you can't, it's very difficult to just go in and completely fake stuff, but. Well, anyway. you just don't, you don't want to, um, you don't want to like put yourself in a corner where you, you're incapable of finishing because you're, achieve, you're trying to achieve this level. So when you say kind of bullshit and something, it's like, don't worry about if that eyebrow every line is like perfect you know you can kind of scribble that in you know <laughs> this is so good right here oh my god i could live in this panel all day and again it's a black silhouetted figure yeah. it's so crazy see jay knows what he's doing and he's yeah. able to cut corners in ways that are still striking and he you know pose. it's funny he's used it's good yeah. i'm kind of afraid to do side sh things people yeah. going sideways yeah i agree yeah so uh, like, it can feel a little flat but yeah when it works it works so yeah. yeah he has really fun shapes like i mean this whole this this whole thing is just really like exciting to look at the way that he gets all those swings yeah yeah i mean it's like uh oh, so oh i love, love this page yeah this is a great one Oh, so cool. I love it because of the scale of the rock on the last panel. Yeah. Yes. Look at that. It's just such an interesting design. So this looks, this looks out of um, uh, Mignola, um, the uh, Wolverine jung Jungle Adventure. Oh, yeah. Right. I love this. This aesthetic to me, it's like. A different scale to it, though. But uh, I love the super thin, crunchy pin line mixed yeah. with large well-placed black shadows and that little bit of splatter with the flat color that panel right there is i just love that style like if you can it, harness that you know <laughs> it's funny too because this is the tell the tell is I, I, I've, I've never i haven't seen jay use uh what like i don't know, you call this diagonal when you have lines going both ways like, yeah like, checkerboard like he never does that and it's funny that he did it there but it's like he because he got it from mignola like oh wow it, but, it, but if you look right here like none of them really have that they're always just parallel lines yeah but Except he's kind of doing his own thing though he's not doing yeah. it oh uh, no it looks yeah great. it looks uh, it looks awesome oh, this is nice too abba says i love super fun sundays we do too 
yeah no it's 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 really really a nice thing i look forward to it all week i mean i was thinking about this for like the last five days oh damn look at this holy shit yeah that's just crazy it's so dark I, it's a little dark for me but yeah, they I, after looking playing around with the old school palettes there's not a lot of middle ground you know there's very little middle ground so if you want those colors you're yeah. gonna end up going dark so i fudge it a lot i don't do straight old school oh my um, gosh this is nuts he he could um man. he could work on like all those those um horror manga <laughs> yeah people would love it but i mean that's a great way to look at his stuff he brings a level of horror to kind of mainstream stuff yeah well you know and and look the the i'm gonna stop sharing my screen um the it, we were talking about like like uh deadlines um you know doing series and stuff like that it's i think it's really important like like um i know i don't know if steven's here or if he'll watch this but seven um hmm. you know he said it, it's just like nobody wants to wait like a year for a follow-up issue of a story yeah you know no one's got that kind of patience and the thing is is like if you could do seven or eight comic books a year and and really kind of expedite like like the storytelling and and it's i i think that there's really the tie-in to me is the manga thing where it's like mm -hmm. people look forward every month to getting more of the story with manga it's every week i think you know yeah. but, uh, mm -hmm. It's an interesting, it's an interesting, um, well, and by the time they come here, they already, there's already like five volumes of, you know, right. 300, 300 pages already, you know, yeah. so they're getting a lot, but I, I would great. argue that 300 pages of, a uh, 300 pages of a manga equal like one issue of a Chris Claremont X-Men issue. So <laughs> I'm going to say hi to Johnny really quick. Johnny, I was thinking about you the other day. I, I know Johnny from, um, I actually think that, that, uh, Johnny is related to Mike Miller or friends. With oh, Mike really? Miller. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, I've known Johnny for years, but yeah, I was, I was actually thinking about you the other day, Johnny, I, I missed seeing you at comic-con the last two years, but, uh, anyway, but yeah, so that was, that was really fun. What do you have to today, Kelsey? What's the plan for the K man? Uh, eating first. I gotta get some, <laughs> I gotta get some food, and then I'm doing a lot of inking today, and then hopefully a little page layout. But I, I really want to start doing videos again. Oh. So I've been doing like um, quick gesture drawings, uh, like um, trying to see if I can do them in just a few minutes at a time, uh, yeah. of like full on characters, but as fast as I can do them. Right. So I might. I've been recording those. I may put oh, those yeah. out. Do put some yeah. up. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm I've been an, an original art dealer for the last two weeks. For people <laughs> that are interested in original art, I'll put a link to my comic art fans gallery, which is where I'm selling all this stuff. Mm. But I have I have pages that range from eighty to a couple hundred dollars to I'm selling two Travis pages that are like going for a ton. Ooh. I have a Aaron Weisenfeld Team Seven cover <sighs> that's available, but those are those are high end collectibles. Wait, let but, me do uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> i i just like i said i want to i want to have money in the bank to finish crystal planet and go into blaster kid mm. as smooth as possible mm -hmm. so my plan was sell a bunch of shit <laughs> bank account, and then let's go yeah rocket yeah, yeah. go straight into it guns yeah. blazing jay yeah. lee on a on a schedule style <laughs> I know. Uh, my, my style is going to be Mark Silvestri, Jay Lee, and Travis meets me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, I don't know. So now, now all the public can give you crap for following other artists. How dare you? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I mean that's, that's kind of what my stuff looks like to me. It looks like Travis, mm. Silvestri, and Jay Lee. So I think they're, they're all in there somewhere, I'm sure. The yeah. best of it is mine is a little piece of everybody <laughs> there's like literally a little bit of everybody in there so <laughs> here, here we go this is the million dollar the, the here's the million dollar question what do we like more traditional or digital comic drawing uh traditional except for mine i prefer digital <laughs> oh uh, uh, to 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 draw or, or yeah it, it has its it has its benefits so but uh i'd much rather do it traditionally yeah but uh yeah there's still some economic concerns where there's still a good portion of it's going to be 
digital <laughs> and space and all this stuff. Headaches. I get, I get more stressed out when I work digitally for some uh, well, reason. I, I was literally one of the first guys to start doing all yeah. digital work. So, uh, you know, I, I've had a long history of it. <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's funny. I don't know what it is to me. It's like like the idea of sitting in front of the computer for eight hours, like drawing, really makes me nervous. Oh, thank I hate you, it. So I'm I'm gr- I want a lap board, mm-hmm. and uh, I want to go sit out on my porch uh, when the weather starts changing and draw like out there. That'd be great. It, there's a there's a possibility that the the videos when I originally uploaded them didn't get very many views, and I may not have mm-hmm. followed through with it. I mean, a lot of times I'll, I'll start a series and if I see a lack of interest in it and like significant low views, it's, it's kind of like you have to sort of weigh the, um, options on it. I, mm-hmm. Look, I mean, right now I've, I've said this to people like on Patreon, I do more less than videos. I've got like between six and 700 videos up there. You can find like, like just about anything over there, but I, I'm not trying to build a YouTube channel on tutorials. Like I think David Finch seems to clearly be more like 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 that's kind of the the purpose of his youtube channel my channel is really just to um uh to to hang out with you guys honestly like you you, you rarely will see me promote my own stuff here um i i feel more comfortable talking about other artists work and it's just a place to be a fan um so you know as we move into blaster kid that was another question i was going to get blaster kid will be launched by the end of the year um but uh yeah, I I I, uh, I I don't really want to have a tutorial channel. There's there's plenty. <laughs> yeah, I want I want to engage people's interest in like character and story and stuff because right. like I've been so into like technique and like how tos and like the, there's literally thousands and thousands of people doing that and now we're seeing industry pros come in like Finch and they're doing it too and it's like oh so you can go learn how they do their thing, but ultimately it's all kind of based on the same principles that everybody's yeah. talking about. But man, we need a Stan Lee, you know, we need people out there talking about the exciting stories in today's episode of, you know, yeah. <laughs> blaster I, kid. <laughs> right. Right. And that was, that was kind of always more important to me. I was, I've been very conscious of this for a long time. I mean, I've been on YouTube, I think for almost six years and about a year or two in it, as I started kind of defining the channel, it was very apparent to me that I didn't want to be um, a how-to channel. So mm. it's just a Patreon. Well, and, and look, I was never going to do a Patreon. I was encouraged by people to do Patreon. Mm. And after I had, uh, I think, 200 videos on YouTube, I did Patreon. But I never, mm. I, I, you know, you see people that sign up on YouTube and they're like, hey, I've got a Patreon. I'm doing YouTube. I'm on this. I'm on that. Like, like I, it all grew very naturally for me. Um, but uh, yeah, I didn't come to YouTube to like milk all of you for cash. <laughs> <laughs> I like you sharing books off your shelf to open that book, Rich. Yeah, you know, that, I, those I, uh, are my favorites. My my old phone worked better. Like my new phone doesn't record them as good. That's why those haven't been happening as much. Mm. Um, but uh, one one suggestion: if you do sign up on Patreon and if you're looking for videos, search by hashtags. You don't. I don't think you have to put a hashtag in front of it. But if you put like figure drawing, you're you're going to pull up all the videos and then just look at the hashtags under that video, and you'll be able to go down more rabbit holes than you'll ever want. Mm-hmm. Uh, real quick, Sam Reeves says YouTube how to seem to be very shallow dive into whatever subject. Yeah, you kind of have to piece them all together. Like I found this one guy who's very, very advanced Photoshop techniques. Um, I'll have to see if I can find him and maybe post it. But, it, you know, if you want to know how to do, uh, I, I don't know, just some, just some tech, like make proper glows for like neon signs or whatnot right. you know this guy knows how to do it in ways that i've never seen before and it has great results so you, you just and that's that's for that i'll go to that guy for that particular thing you know how to do these certain techniques you know how to posterize correctly you know uh well, and then there's other people I'll go to finch for like i want to know how finch does it let me go to finch yeah well, <laughs> And, and Prater, when you go through some of the more recent um, videos on my Patreon, I talk about this. The thing is, is look, uh, it, it, you have to have a focus of what you want to do with your art right now. The idea of going like, okay, today I'm going to learn how to draw guns. Tomorrow I'm going to work on heads. T- the next day I'm going to do hands and all this. You mm-hmm. are literally just going to spin your wheels forever. You're going to overload your brain and you're going to have trouble. The th- mm. What you need to do is you need to go, I want to draw three Spider-Man pages in the next month. And you need to sit down 
and you need to try to draw them. And if you can't draw hands good, then you take it on that. Okay, I there need to go. work on that a little bit. But this idea of like like just cramming more shit in your head, I just don't see it working for anyone. And they all all these people get overwhelmed and they burn out. I watch them because I follow I follow almost three thousand people on Instagram. And of those 3,000, I would say 2,000 are aspiring artists that have barely any followers, but I'll follow people back. A lot of pros don't do that. But the thing is, is I see people and I go, that person's going to have trouble if they keep trying to learn the way that they're doing. And then all of a sudden, mm. you just, they just drop off and, and they're not practicing. They've, they've overloaded their brain. You really, really have to have a goal and a focus and try to go as directly towards that as possible. Best way to learn is just jump in and do it. I tell people that all the time. I know drawing pages is hard, but it's not going to get any easier. It, 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 you like mm -hmm. the thing. I, my rap is always that like you could literally practice for three years, and I guarantee the first day that you read a script after that yeah. three years of learning everything that you think sure that you're going to know, what happened, <laughs> Kelsey? Oh, you 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 suddenly see all the crap that you never thought about drawing. <laughs> panel yeah. one, page one. The first panel is everything you didn't figure out how to draw. <laughs> but all, but, but look, the thing is, is that all those things. Someone mentioned Proco. Proco is a great channel. Like, like, uh, there's a digital colorist that I really liked um, that posts really, really great stuff. But the thing is, is I, I'll save their videos. I usually will save them on my computer in case they get pulled down. But, but it's like, like, if I want to work on backs for an afternoon, then I might go to yeah. Proco and see if he's got a good back video. And, and I'm kind of, I plug in the little areas that I'm having yeah. trouble with. I do exactly pretty much what you're doing is when I'll just draw from instinct. And then I'm like, I want to put a little more effort into this back shot, yeah. you know, and then I'll go to guys like Proko and like, and he'll be doing some life drawing study. And yeah. I, I don't even, it doesn't even have to be exactly what they're doing. It's not like you're copying it. You're looking at how and where he's placing the muscles, the shadows, and you're trying to do that in your own piece, but not copy what he's doing. So yeah, it's, yeah, you got to just jump in there. And, and if and, it's and, not perfect, it's not perfect. Who cares? Right. Look, and if you're learning to draw, this is what I kind of tell people too, is I say, look, please, please, please give yourself the opportunity to fail. Do not judge your work. You, you should draw for at least three to six months and do not ever go because that drawing sucked or I had trouble with something that you stop. You just need to put in your mind, I'm going to draw for three months. I'm, I'm going to finish the things that I start no matter yeah. if finish it's, it's, i used to do this thing where like, i've always been able to draw well but there's the things that i can't draw i'm horrible at and so i would start and i would draw all the stuff that i'm good at i could draw a gnome's head really good and i could draw <laughs> the and i would get to the hands or the arm and i wouldn't know what to do with it and i would quit and and i did so many drawings that were like 20 percent of the way drawn 30 yeah. percent of the way drawn and then i would just tap out and like bail and find you know uh, any distraction that i could to not have to deal with that i sucked at some stuff yeah but yeah just draw for like six months and you'll improve draw Period. page a day page a day yeah if yeah. you can Try yeah, but, try for a page a day. That's uh... <laughs> but, but all those tutorials are fantastic. But but I would say take them on a need to know basis. If you are struggling with heads, spend a day or two on heads, and then try to get back into your work and see if if that helped you. You know, you're never going to get it perfect until you actually try to work. Mm -hmm. Like oh, Jay Lee. so true. Like Jay Lee, we'll bring it all home to Jay Lee. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think he's I think he actually he's now doing like he's not trying to push it to the limit and he's not also he's he's not like half assing it. He's got this nice middle ground where I think he he's doing classy work at a reasonable pace, you know, for him. So yeah, I, that's where you want to get. That's what time and effort and all this putting in the work that'll get you to that place where you know you have an idea, you can execute idea. That's where you want to get. I like I like Sheldon's comment. I want to go back to it. Um, mm. uh, frustration is a sign that you're learning, and you should learn to be excited by it. And it's it look, it's very mm. very difficult. I I um I I'll sit and I'll draw for a couple of hours and just go like I'm gonna draw like female heads for like two hours, and I'll knock out like thirty or forty yeah. forty heads. Um and uh, you know some days I'm just not focused and they kind of turn out shitty. But the thing is, is that I know I'm getting better and better at it. Like mm -hmm. I I've, I've learned to trust the um the the experience of it, you know, but it's, yeah. it's hard. 
So, all right. Well, thank all of you. We need to get Kelsey to get some food. Yes, hungry. <laughs> so anyway, pop up and and do continue to keep learning. You know, I'm not saying not to do that. And continue to buy comic books because <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're fun. <laughs> yeah, they're fun, and uh, they're who knows how long they'll be around. They start buying all these back issues. Going to be harder to get. Go get them now. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, you guys, we love you all, and we thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that that was fun. Uh, there was other recommendations that are very, very tempting, and uh, maybe next week we'll do some, what was it, Spanish, or uh, what artists did they want? Yeah, from down South American artists. Yeah. There's a lot lot to choose from. Dude, I mean, a, a modern-day guy, of Ed Bennis, is pretty damn good. Yeah. I think Mike Diodato is down there, too, somewhere. Mm-hmm. Thought Diodato is great. So, all right, you guys, have a good one. We're going to end the broadcast. Have a good one. Later, gang. Bye.